Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. When I found the Free State Project, I knew it was the key to achieving liberty in my lifetime. It's awesome to be surrounded by like-minded, freedom-loving activists who've moved here to New Hampshire. From politics to civil disobedience, we have it all. Where I came from, it felt that no matter what I did, liberty was dying. Perhaps you feel the same way? Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. That's 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live, you can bring up anything that you want. All you have to do is dial on in toll-free here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on our site. We give them away to you. Once again, that's freetalklive.com. Uh, coming up, more on the porn industry under fire in Los Angeles and now maybe even in the whole state of California. We'll give you more about that. Plus, Ellen will tell us about artificial intelligence. Is it uh, is it even closer than before? We'll find out about that and your calls welcome. Also, you can join us via Skype. Our Skype number or Skype username rather is lrn.fm, so feel free to connect in that way if you like. We've uh, of course got ProXPN bringing you the phone lines here and that's a great solution for you if you care about privacy and they can do uh, a lot for you for just $5 a month. What they do is encrypt your data connection on the internet. And that means that your internet service provider isn't going to know what you're doing anymore. Right now, they're probably keeping logs on you and recording every website you visit, every search term that you enter for as many as six months to five years. So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Download their software. It's available for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, as well as Android. And if you are a Linux user, setup's a little bit different, but you can easily get ProXPN working with Linux. So use code FTL20 to save 20% off the price of their premium account at proxpn.com slash FTL. That's FTL20 is the code. And you get a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. ProXPN does not Keep records of your online habits, and when you buy the premium account, the annual plan breaks the price down to 5 bucks a month. You get unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to, and the ability to even privately torrent with ProXPN. It's an awesome service, and the price is right. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL to get started today. We'll get back into the porn topic here in a moment. First, we got Randy listening in Canada. Randy, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ellen, and Daryl. Hey, gang. Hey, Randy. Uh a pleasure to talk to you, and uh, thanks for the opportunity. Sure, go ahead with your thoughts tonight. I, I just wanted to relate to you uh, uh, an incident that occurred with uh, my son, um, and it relates to public public high school. I just wanted to relate how uh, how these people are, are really nothing but bullies. These people? You um, mean the government bureaucrats? Yeah, yeah. Um, especially the people that operate the school, the school system. Um, we homeschooled our our children. We have two children. My daughter is now just graduated uh, from homeschool, and my son is going into grade eleven. Mm-hmm. Um, my son went into uh, he pl- he played community football for a number of years, and then uh, he decided that he would play uh, high school football. So they allowed him to play high school football, even though he was a, a homeschooler. Um, and there was some problems on the team that that we we really we really didn't like, and we thought, you know what, we'll just bite our bite our tongue. And uh, when you say problems, season, you mean like you know he wasn't getting along with some of the people on the team? Yeah. Well, the first instance was one of the coaches at the beginning of the beginning of the season. Um, uh, we went in to register, and he said, uh, "What are you guys doing here?" And we said, "Well, Liam's coming to play uh, coming to play football." And he says, "Well, does he go to does he go to school here with Taskland? And we said, "No, he's homeschooled." And he said, "Well, he can't play here then." And I said, well, yeah, uh, we've already got it cleared, and he can play. And, he, and then the coach said, well, that's BS. <laughs> and we'll, 
So th- that was our introduction to the high school. To the well, high school this is going to be a good program. year. I mean, at this yeah, point, you've got yeah. the coach who doesn't want, you know, he doesn't want the guy there. How hard do you really want to push to get him on the team at that point? Well, you know, we had waited and waited and waited. I mean, we, we probably could have taken him to a, to a different community, but we'd waited. Um, and, of course, this is his hometown, so he wants, you know, and a lot of his friends are here, so he wants to play with them, right? Mm-hmm. So um, we, let, we, we let it slide. And as the, as the year progressed, it, it, you know, we saw, we saw things that we really weren't happy with. Um, and uh, we thought we told our son, you know what, we'll just finish, we'll finish out the season, and, and then next season, if you want to play somewhere else, we'll just move on. Um, so at the end of the season, uh, the, the season finished, and then we said, okay, so we'll move over to Camrose, which is about, it's about 20 miles down the road from us to another high school. And they said, uh, no, you can't, you can't, uh, you can't move because the uh, the Alberta School Athletic Association has a has a policy that says that um, once uh, once a, a child has joined a, a high school, their eligibility is tied to that school for the rest of their high school um, rest of their high school um, tenure. When you say their eligibility is tied to that school, what does that mean? Eligibility for what? Being able to, to a, participate in to, athletics. To, yeah, correct. Uh-huh. To participate in athletics. So and once so you sign up, a, you pick your school, and you're stuck. Right. And now, Look, the buddy, it's policy. That, we can't change it. <laughs> that was exactly my point. Now, um, if the family actually winds up moving from one uh, jurisdiction to another, then obviously they can. they can. But if it's one of these things to where you're, you know, shopping around for a school, so mm-hmm. to speak, then you well, can't change it after you make a decision. Yeah, that's essentially what they said. And now the reason that they gave us that they said that they don't they do that is because and I think it's a pretty lame excuse to be honest with you, because what it what it allows is mediocrity or even less than mediocrity. So they say that what happens is when they have a good coach, um players uh, athletes tend to follow the good coach around around the countryside. So if a coach leaves this high school and goes to another high school, Mm -hmm. then what will happen is a high school student will follow that coach. So then what will end up happening is the one high school will end end up where they they won't have any players. I see. And I say, well, uh, too bad. Yeah, people people can't be allowed to have that level of freedom. Uh, School choice, not an option. Yeah, well, then it wouldn't be equal. You know, the the different schools would have different... uh, you know, variable levels on which they could compete depending on how many students or what, you know, what uh, experience level of the students they are. Well, even for college athletes, there are rules about transferring from one school to another. So well, if, for instance... I can understand that, um, and, you know, but, but they make they make you aware of it at, at the college level. Um, you, I'm, I'm sure that you have to sign a contract, but, you know, this is this is high school high school sports. Right, they they should have made you aware of it beforehand. That way, you would have been able to make a fully informed decision. Hey, man, you can go read all the laws anytime you want to. Read all the code for all the school district, and it's all there for you. You can just take it well, yeah. anytime you well, want. Well, we did get a copy of the of the of the policy manual, and it's you know it's, it's got to be a thousand pages long. Wow, and, you know, you know, trying to interpret some of the stuff that's in there is just is it's just silly. All but, right. You know, so where are you going with this story? Well, what I'd like what I'd like you to do, um, we created. They're not going to let my son play. That's for sure because they, they've made their mind up. We we went to a meeting um, because I, and I made out a statement because I said we weren't moving our son for athletic reasons, is what their manual says. I said we're moving our son because we saw stuff here that um, um, was detrimental to my son's development. In terms of his emotional and his, um, his 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 mental development. Now, we I saw bullying, I saw drug use. Um, and this was all <laughs> on the football team where you saw this. Yeah, I saw players. Players were coming to practice. For for example, uh, some some of the senior players were were smoking drugs, or they wouldn't show up for practice and that sort Stand of stuff. Stand by, Randy. We'll let you wrap this up here in a moment. You can also bring up whatever's on your mind here, toll free on Free Talk Live. More coming up. 
It's the heart of summer across America. Thoughts turn to childhood and long days of fun. Everybody would love to feel like a kid again. And HB Extract can be a vital tool in your battle to stay vibrant and young as it supports healthy blood pressure and circulation while balancing cholesterol. GCN and longtime sponsor HB Extract want to help keep your heart healthy with the 30 Bottles 30 Days Summer Giveaway. Enter to win by visiting GCNlive.com between now and August 29th and click on the contest banner in the top left corner of the page. HB Extract has helped tens of thousands of people worldwide feel good again. And they've done it with HB Extract's exclusive formula of wild crafted and organic herbs. Here's to you enjoying many more long, warm, and fun-filled summers free of pain and sickness. Visit GCNlive.com and enter to win in the 30 Bottle 30 Days Summer Giveaway with HB Extract. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Sign up now at GCNlive.com. Hey guys, Mark Claire here, lionsofliberty.com, where we strive to advance the ideas of liberty daily. We bring you the Morning Roar! That's right, every Monday to Friday we'll have a brand new edition of the Morning Roar, where we provide a roundup of some news stories that you may not find in the mainstream media, or even in your typical social media news feed. We find stories that relate to the ideas of liberty and provide you with our liberty perspective on them. Every Monday, we have our longest-running feature, Mondays with Murray, named after the great libertarian Murray Rothbard, where we'll examine an article or an excerpt from his works and help convey his view, along with our little spin as well. We wrap it all up every Friday with Felony Friday, where our own John Odermatt goes out and takes a look at some sort of felony. There's felonies committed every day, you know, whether it's a felony committed by the police, a politician, or even an average citizen. You can find all of this and so much more over at lionsofliberty.com. Advancing the Ideas of Liberty Daily. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Lil Drums. Every bit as fun as a full-size Nestle drumstick cone and definitely cuter. Visit us at drumstick.com. Vacations are all about family time, but you don't have to leave home to have fun. Take one weekend a month and devote it to family activities. Pull out the board games and puzzles, serve up some treats, or have a picnic. Even without leaving home, you'll feel like you've really had some time away. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash your family today. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit Promote.LRN.FM for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You may bring up anything you want. The toll-free number is 855-453-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us online. Go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you there. Uh, Great stuff. Allows you to get interactive with our other listeners. The primary way is by voting for and submitting content right to the front page of the website. It's easy to do. All you need is a Reddit account and a Free Talk Live account. They're both free, so you tie them in together with a very simple process. It's, uh, again, over at freetalklive.com. Go and get interactive. 
And Bitcoin, I'm a big fan. It's a decentralized currency, meaning that not operated by any government or bank or corporation. It takes money out of the hands of the people who've had it for generations and puts it into the hands of you and I. Bitcoin's so important, and you really should consider getting some when you're ready. Or maybe you've already had some, you're ready to get some more. Go to ExpressCoin.com. you got to have your Bitcoin wallet first, so go to blockchain and uh, blockchain.com grab your bitcoin wallet and once you've got your bitcoin wallet you can load it up over at express coin in fact you can get it uh, get up to forty dollars of bitcoin for no fee when you use coupon code ftl at expresscoin.com so maybe you've been waiting and you've been thinking about getting bitcoin but you just haven't gotten in yet maybe you just can't i don't want to pay three percent i don't want to give somebody money to change out my cash to bitcoin well express coin will do it for nothing for less than $40 worth, you get no transfer fee at expresscoin.com when you use code FTL. Now, you can also buy Dogecoin. You can buy Litecoin, Blackcoin, Darkcoin. Those are all available through expresscoin.com. You can buy them with money order, check, or wire transfer, or even bank deposit. Go and learn more and get started. You can even download their smartphone app at expresscoin.com. We go back to Canada. Randy is on the line telling us about uh, this. your teenage son. He was homeschooled, but you wanted to get involved in a football program. It turns out the coach, uh, not real friendly. Some of the experiences your son had with some of the players, not really good. Uh, drug use, all kinds of you know threatening, violence. You decided you wanted to leave this particular school, but they told you, as far as the program, the, the sports program, they told you, sorry, no dice. And that's kind of yep. where you left the story off. Yeah, they said no dice. So they said, do you want to have a meeting over this? And I said, sure, I'd be happy to meet with you folks. So my wife and I loaded the video camera in the car, and we drove down to the school. Oh, they're not going to like that. Oh, no, they didn't like that. We set the video up in the, in, in, in the boardroom, mm -hmm. and uh, the head coach was there, the assistant coach was there, the athletic director was there, and the principal was there. So they started on the uh, – well, first off, I said I wanted, to, I wanted to record this because I wanted a record of our, sure. of our interaction here. And As they said, should well, be your right when interacting right, and, with a government bureaucrat. Right. And they said, well, okay, we'll let you, but, you know, um, can we have a copy of it too? And I said, so when I sat down, I said, um, what I do with the video will be wholly dependent on the outcome of this meeting. Wow, so and, you really put the pressure on them. Yeah, and so um, we left it at that. Um, now, I didn't make a fairly good, I didn't make a very good representation after watching the video. In, in my opinion, I didn't make a very good representation because I was very angry with these people. Mm -hmm. Um but anyways, um, they did this, what they called an investigation, and I, I was, I was kind of leery about that. So what I had done is I'd made a statement, and I said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to talk about anything outside of this statement. So I made the statement, and, you know, sure enough, I got home, and there was an email, uh, one from the head coach that, that said, because, I'll just read it to you here verbatim. It says, because it, because it may not have been clearly stated, we also wanted to make sure that you knew that none of the persons representing Wetaskiwin uh, Composite High School gave consent for the video to be released <laughs> in any way, and we want a copy of it. <laughs> that was from the head coach. And then from the principal, she says, um, thank you for attending the meeting. Unfortunately, after reviewing the information provided, we've been unable to reach any agreeable outcome. <laughs> the event of the meeting... Um, will be related to the superintendent, and we will. We are currently contacting our legal advisors to consider what future action may need to occur. Mm. Yeah, sounds so, like a threat. Yeah, that sounds like a threat to me. So, now, when was this issued? Uh, how long ago? Um, this would have been in June. Okay. And June, think of how 15. ridiculous this response is. Like, if people wrote these laws, they can certainly unwrite them, especially since it's just these aren't even laws. These no, are just it's, regulations. It's regulations yeah, within. Policy. The sports, but it's regulations still are a lot easier to unwrite. Then why didn't they? Well, they like control. Yeah. They don't want to unwrite them. Then they wouldn't be able to have all these hearings and uh, ex exercise their power over people. If if you could just well, willy nilly we leave told. when you don't want their service anymore, I mean, where would their control be? Yeah, that's what we were told that if they let one of the one of the coaches um, who from a different school had said. Um, that he heard through the grapevine because they kind of circled the wagons and they all they're all kind of working together, but they're they're you know they're trying to make you feel like you know we're on your side and we're doing what we can for you. But he said, you know what, they uh, they won't they won't let your son go because it'll set a precedent. I wish you the best, Randy. Thanks for sharing your thoughts tonight. What do you get when you you know have a monopoly on schools? Well, look around you.
I mean, that's basically what the government has. I, I guess it's not really fair to call it a monopoly. Yeah, in most jurisdictions, you can opt your kids out and send them to some sort of alternative. In some places, it's more difficult than others. But they're still forcing you to pay for their school. That's true. Yeah, and true. you have to prove your eligibility every time you switch. In a lot of places, there's requirements on homeschooling programs where if the state, if you've got kids who are in the state schools and then you pull them out, well, they know that you, they know you've got those kids, so they're going to start asking questions. There was one lady around here who came across the ideas of freedom through meeting some of the liberty activists. She decided she wanted to take her kids out of the government schools, and they came after her with criminal charges. Now, ultimately, I think they dropped those criminal charges because she wouldn't take the plea deal. Uh, but you know, they were trying to come after her, and essentially, I think that they were trying to call her an unfit mother or something like that. I forget the exact detail of the thrust of how they were coming after her but it was definitely a tactic designed to intimidate her into sending her children back to the government schools because the more students they have the larger their budget is the next year well and also the more government funding as far as federal funding they get that's true as well because the federal funding is dependent upon the average attendance per day throughout the school year That's yeah why i'm saying a- that doing this for the good of the children is just such a thin veil really like if you see where the funding is coming directly well they're doing it certainly for the good of the administrator's paychecks right and the teachers union uh wrangling more bennies benefits and uh, pay for the teachers let's go to virgil he's in ohio listening online hello virgil uh good evening guys how are oh, you hey good what's on your mind tonight well, I'm calling uh, to talk to you guys about a, uh, a fairly well-known shooting that took place not far from my house, actually here in uh, in Ohio. Oh, no. It was kind of all over the yeah, it was all over the news. Uh, it happened about four nights ago, where a 22-year-old black man was shopping at a Walmart. Apparently, he was shopping for uh, some sort of an air rifle or a BB gun of sorts. Oh, and, man, uh, I heard about this. Yeah, and as he was uh, apparently just messing with a gun and trying to uh, figure out how it worked, I assume it was just normal activity uh, that you know someone goes through, you know, before purchasing an item to mm-hmm. study it and look at it. Uh, someone apparently decided to call nine one one to report him as being suspicious and uh, carrying a, a rifle in Walmart. Uh, a lot of panic was created, and and two cops basically showed up, and they uh, they basically killed this man. Wow. Uh, yeah, Tell and uh, to it's terrible. It's it's very tragic. Um, and what happened to to add to that as as people were freaking out after the shots uh, from the police rang out. Uh, one woman attempting to run away from the store. She had a heart attack, and she also oh. unfortunately died. Wow. Um, so this is tragic on so many fronts, and. Uh, uh, there, there is some some uh, indication that uh, he was on the phone while the cops, uh, you know, came from behind him and asked him to drop the gun. And then, mm. I, it, it seems like they only gave him a couple of seconds to react, uh, and then they shot him as he was turning around towards them. So it, uh, you know, he even told them the gun is not real because the person he was on the oh. phone with, uh, he heard him saying so. Um, so That's this crazy. is tragic, and uh, and the Dayton cop uh, cop block guys are scheduling a protest tomorrow morning at ten thirty uh, at Walmart in Beaver Creek. So if anyone is listening and wants to join us, uh, by all means, we need your support. So Dayton cop block, uh, very cool, Virgil. I guess keep us in the loop with uh, what transpires there. And when I say very cool, we'll I mean only the protest part, the shooting part, not cool. Uh, thanks for the call tonight. Toll free number eight fifty five four fifty free. You take control here. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting and insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. 
This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. I didn't believe it. Neither did I. No way could you professionally remove unwanted hair, pain-free, and at home. My thoughts exactly. Remove my face and body hair without expensive, painful office visits. Not possible. Great minds think alike. Until I tried No-No Pro. Mm-hmm. Wait, you tried No-No? Yes, and it works. I use it on my face, legs, bikini line. We're BFFs, and you didn't tell me about No-No? Here, this is my new No-No Pro. The most powerful No-No made. Custom treatment levels, less hair in less time, perfect for any skin type. Try it. No hair, no pain, no time consuming expensive office visits? No. No. And no, no. For a limited time, you can try No-No Pro risk-free. You'll also get the facial kit and a travel case. Get weeks of long-lasting results. That's it. I'm getting a no-no. Great minds do think alike. (laughs) (laughs) Try No-No Pro risk-free by calling 800-952-5760. 800-952-5760. That's 800-952-5760. 800-952-5760. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. 50 free. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited to bring up anything that you want. Just dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you tonight, Ian here. Ellen. And Daryl. And Daryl is joining us courtesy of his website, fpp.cc. You can go there and get lots more, Daryl, in audio and written form. Yes. So go check it out, fpp.cc. He's got a long-form show uh, that he does called Peace... Love Liberty Radio, and then also daily, seven days a week, you're doing a five-minute newscast. Yes, 187 days in a row as of today. Ah, so you passed the halfway mark then. Yes. Half year. Congratulations on that. Of course, it's available via podcast. Also airs on LRN.FM at the top of basically every other hour during our live shows and recorded shows. So go to uh, FPP.cc for more of Daryl and also FPP Radio. 
Facebook.com. As we continue here, your calls and thoughts are certainly welcome. Uh, we'll get back into the porn story. Uh, porn's under attack in Los Angeles and maybe even California-wide. We'll give you the uh, the story here in a moment, but or the full story. We touched on it a little bit earlier. But since we had a call about school, I figured, Daryl, you actually had some school-related show prep here tonight about those school laptops that uh, you know various different schools have been asking for money for for many many years some of them got them i remember after i got out of school you know like well well over a decade and a half ago i think at this point uh i remember there was some push for these laptops like there was a big deal to get all the kids oh every kid in the school needs to have a laptop we can't learn People cannot learn without having laptops. So there was this big push, and of course, it was very expensive. And you know, they wanted uh, sponsors, etc. So now they're destroying the laptops. And where is this happening? What's what's going on? Uh, this story is from Reason.com, and it's about at least one school district in New Jersey. And the story starts off. It says bureaucrats love to throw fancy technology at students and expect it to magically improve students' learning outcomes. Mm -hmm. That, however, is easier than hiring, training, and fairly compensating good teachers, right? A New Jersey school district has admitted that its every seventh grader gets a laptop plan was a dismal failure and is preparing to destroy the devices. Whoa. This seems a little drastic. Yeah, they can't just sell them. They have to, you know, cremate them out of spite. Right, so they are not, you know, getting them and then selling them to Best Buy or some other computer place to, hey, refurbish these and try and make some money. Well, they're used laptops, right? I mean, there's only so much you can do with that. Right, but if you look online, type in refurbished laptop. Right. Then you will find a bunch of laptops that have been That's true. refurbished and available for sale at a much lower price than what a brand new laptop would cost. But apparently the school district, uh, which was able to obtain these laptops five years ago through federal stimulus money. Remember the mm. American Recovery Act? No. The the Barack Obama, you know, multi, multi-trillion dollar stimulus. We're going to get America back to work. Is this the one going to build the bridges? That, that was part of it, and okay. then repave roads and do okay. a bunch of other stupid stuff. So school computers were in there, too. School like computers were in there, there as well. Like expecting it to trickle through the economy. Right. Yeah. Well, everything's better now. It must have worked, right? Right. Isn't so, everything better? You know, part, part, yeah, of the American, part of the American Recovery Act was giving laptops to students. I see. All right. The intention was that the kids would use them for homework, and teachers, sure, teachers would design... Internet involved assignments and lessons. Hmm. Instead, calamity after calamity ensued. Ooh. And according to a report, by the time Jeremy, or rather Jerry Crocomo, a computer network engineer, arrived in Hoboken's school system in 2011, or in 2011, every seventh, eighth, and ninth grader had a laptop. So he arrived three years in. Mm -hmm. Each year, a new crop of seventh graders were outfitted with laptops. So is, three years in, I mean, these kids must have been way smarter than the other kids in New Jersey because of tech. Technology makes people smarter, right? But don't most schools have a public library in them where you can go and use the computer? I don't know if it's public. Okay, I'm well, pretty sure it's, it's not public. It's, it's for, for students. all of the students yeah. to go to. Yes. yes. And uh, they all they have to do is sign a piece of paper and they That's can use the enough, computer. Though. I mean, Ellen, this isn't 1996 where only some students needed computers in well, order to do Well, they could protect things. their property much better that way. I mean, at least then, you know, if the goal is to get students to do their work online, then you can actually oversee and help them along with that. Right, but no, see, that's why it's called homework, Ellen. You do this work at home. If you did the work at Which school, it hated. would be called schoolwork. Now, wait a minute, Daryl, I'm confused. Does the story go into the the debacles that they were talking about? Like it, were, it does. Okay, I mean, I'm curious to know what that was uh, about. So, so this guy shows up three years in. Shows up three years in and says that his small tech staff was quickly overwhelmed with repairs. Mm -hmm. Quote, half a dozen kids a day on a regular basis would bring laptops down going, Spill a drink. My it. books fell on it. Yeah. Somebody sat on it. I dropped it, etc. Yep. Screens were cracked, batteries were dead, keys popped oh my off, God. viruses, what a nightmare. 
he found that teenagers with laptops are still teenagers. teenagers. <laughs> we bought lap quote we bought laptops that had reinforced hard shell cases so that we Damn. could try to offset some of the damage these kids were going that to do. That just made it so they drop them <laughs> off of the buildings, right? Like go up on a second floor. <laughs> and I, I love I love this next sentence. I was impressed with some of the damage they did yeah. anyway. <laughs> some of the laptops would come back to us completely destroyed. Oh, my God. He says laptops were frequently stolen. And this makes no sense to me. If every kid has a laptop, why are people stealing that? What Heroin money. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you'd be surprised. There are definitely some high school kids that are on heroin. He... Then says that he spent much of his time filing police reports and appearing Jeez. in court. In, in court, students quickly figured out how to crack the security software <laughs> uh, and course. spent time visiting unauthorized porn social sites. networks and porn, porn sites. sites, meaning more malware and viruses coming on the computer. <laughs> oh man, there See, is no I remember, more. Sorry, I remember four or five years ago when I was in high school. It was really easy to figure out how to get around the security system to get on MySpace, mm -hmm. which they had blocked. Like, there was all these proxies you could go to. I imagine they have a better setup now where it's a little bit more difficult. So I'm impressed by the creativity of these children. Well, kids are more so sophisticated now. Uh, I mean, you know, you and I, we grew up to some extent on computers, but not like this. I mean, when I was growing up, it was in the 80s, it was the Apple IIe. I mean, it was you could play the Oregon Trail on that, but sending a text message was you know hasn't even hadn't even been envisioned yet. So the level of sophistication in computing today is much higher, and well, these kids have been doing it since day one. And it's not just sophistication, according to Crocomo. There is no more determined hacker than a 12-year-old with a computer, and with a lot of time, right? Because you know, hacking and cracking things, there's time involved. You're going to brute force a password or something like that. You've got to have a machine that can keep running tries password after password after password it takes time if you're 12 well you don't have a job to go my to. guess is that this guy probably didn't set a super difficult password for the security device anyway mm -hmm. and then once one student finds out what it is mm -hmm. he's going to start telling everybody else right and then <laughs> sooner or later everybody in the school knows the password to get around the security system that keeps you off of awesome. you know pornhub.com yeah the teachers find out about that though and then they go about changing it so you have to figure it out all over again but well, it's you not still the figure teacher. it out it's not the teacher that sets the password. It's the tech guy. No, the teacher figures out that you have the password or you know how to get around it because some some idiot is out in public being no. on a site they shouldn't be See, on that, in the that, school. So they find out that they know how to get around the security system. That's why you system. use multiple desktops. How would you do that? You still Most can't computers hide. nowadays have to where you can do multiple desktops. Oh, so if you have, like, the Windows 8 set up, like what I have, if you swipe the touchpad to the side, it'll instantly switch over to a different screen, like yes. the news or something. Yes, so that you can be, you know, watching whatever, and then you see a teacher or hear a teacher, then you just hit something. Yeah, and it's much easier to hide now. <laughs> right. <laughs> if you have a laptop, anyway. Uh, the article goes on to say that students spent more time playing games on their laptops than using them for schoolwork. <laughs> Wi-Fi became another problem. So many people in the vicinity of the school had the internet password that they could just steal it by bringing their own laptops near the school mm -hmm. and then accessing the Wi-Fi that way. The internet eventually became so bogged down that it was completely unusable. Oh, wow. So then there's more. There's more. We'll get to it. But their plan is to destroy these laptops. I have to say, after hearing, you know, the story... It makes sense. I mean, they're five years old. <laughs> they're probably just junk at this point. Just destroy them. I, I'm with them. Hour number two is on the way. It's Free Talk Live. Lumber Liquidators buys direct from the mills, giving you the largest selection of hardwood flooring at the lowest prices. Right now, choose from over 150 hardwoods on sale, including beautiful and stylish white plank pre-finished red oak for just $179 a square foot. That's less than half what you could pay at other stores. Plus, get Dream Home Laminate and Tranquility Vinyl Flooring for 20% off and bamboo for only $179. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. More great deals and special 12-month financing available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Geico Motorcycle presents Reflections from the Road. 
You can't beat the open road, but saving money on motorcycle insurance is a close second. That's why I switched to GEICO. Reminds me of the time I switched to a new helmet without a face mask and swallowed a bunch of gnats when I accidentally yawned. Those suckers tasted bad. Unlike GEICO motorcycle savings, which always tastes real good. GEICO Motorcycle Insurance. See how much you could save. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com the three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, August 8th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,307, silver opened at $19.84, and Bitcoin is trading around $588.30. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Incorporated, specializing in precious metals since 1977. Online at rrbi.co or by phone at 800-874-9760. In the news... The Austin City Council has approved a $1.25 million settlement for the family of Larry Eugene Jackson, the African-American man killed last year by Austin Police Detective Charles Kleinart. Larry Eugene was unarmed and chased down by Detective Kleinart after approaching a bank where police were investigating an attempted robbery. Larry left the scene after police began questioning him and a chase ensued. Larry was never lawfully detained and was not a suspect in the bank incident. The council voted 6-1 to one for the settlement, with only Mayor Lee Leffingwell casting a no vote. According to the Austin American Statesman, Thursday's settlement was the largest of its kind in Austin history. On Saturday, tomorrow, at Brave New Books in Austin, join the Alliance of Austin Agorists as they host Catherine Bleich, Justin and Jessica Armon, and Tracy Ward, four Central Texas residents who have had relative success enterprising in agorist ventures. Join the community from 6 until 10 o'clock for an open discussion on what it takes to find freedom. The event will also feature an agorist farmer's market. The Central Texas Healthy Mothers Healthy Babies Coalition will host a screening of the Milky Way movie tomorrow, Saturday, August 9th, at the Alamo Draft House, located on Slaughter Lane. The movie is all about breastfeeding culture and breastfeeding history in the United States. The screening will be followed by a panel discussion and an opportunity to ask questions about the movie and breastfeeding in general. Tickets include lunch and can be purchased on drafthouse.com. The screening begins at 1 p.m. Children are welcome to attend. To learn more, visit keepaustinbreastfeeding.org. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Brave New Books, your local source for all things Bitcoin. Now hosting a Bitcoin ATM located in Austin, Texas at 1904 Guadalupe Street or online bravenewbookstore.com. And support comes from the notorious activist Michael Cargill, who has a new show called Come and Talk It, live Sunday afternoons at 4 o'clock on 1370 AM in Austin. That's 1370 AM Sundays at 4. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, August 8th, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. The FBI has arrested a Homeland Security employee under charges that he solicited sex with a mother and her underage daughter via Craigslist. George Hervosky is accused of posting an ad on Craigslist in the casual encounter section looking for a mom interested in allowing a man to teach her daughter about sex. Hervosky traded pictures and emails with undercover officers that he believed to be an interested mother. 
His LinkedIn profile lists him as an inspector with the Department of Homeland Security, specifically the TSA. A TSA spokesman told the San Francisco gate he was suspended indefinitely and in the process of being fired. Former NSA contractor and whistleblower Edward Snowden has been granted a three-year residency permit in Russia. One of Snowden's lawyers revealed details of the arrangement at a press conference in Moscow, stating that Snowden is free to move across the country and travel abroad. The news comes on the heels of the Russian government announcing bans of U.S. and EU food, fruits and vegetables. In an attempt to comply with the Digital Accountability and Transparency Act passed by Congress last year, USAspending.gov released the results of an audit of all government spending and found an astounding $619 billion missing from over 300 different federal programs. Who was the biggest offender? The Department of Health and Human Services. They failed to report nearly $544 billion. Overall, the audits show that only 2% to 7% of the recorded spending data in 2012 was consistent with agencies' records. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's. Non-GMO chips, homemade tortillas, and no high-fructose corn syrup in anything. Visit them at one of their two locations in Austin, 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande near UT Campus. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, August 8, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting, reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. From the admission of Ant Colony 00008256.7 KLN 00067X into the Union in 1897 to the day in 1817 when embarrassed construction workers realized they put the Erie Canal in the wrong place. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On August 5, 1962, Nelson Mandela was jailed until 1990, becoming fully rehabilitated through the South African penal system. And thanks to the services provided to him while imprisoned, emerged from jail a successful politician and internationally revered symbol of peace. Mandela's record of overcoming hardships and moving South Africa beyond its formidable racial struggles is a lasting testament to South Africa's correctional facilities and prove that the penal system's small cells, demeaning work duties, and minimal rations are exactly the tools needed for a prisoner to truly become a reformed citizen. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything by dialing in toll-free here to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. we got to come back around to the porn ban story, or near ban. Basically, Los Angeles is running porn producers out of town by requiring that the male performers put on condoms. Uh, we'll give you more details about that because apparently that particular rule may be expanding out to all of California, according to Daryl. We've barely kind of started that, but also we got into a discussion about schools and uh, extracurricular kind of sports activities, ridiculous restrictions that are being put on uh, people who are homeschooled. And then also that led into a larger uh, conversation or a different conversation, I guess, about the destruction of school laptops and why it is that this whole let's give every kid a laptop idea was a terrible idea. And apparently nobody saw this coming, you know, giving a bunch of teenagers, hundreds of teenagers, hundreds of laptops. And well, surprise, they brought this IT professional in and he says day number one, they were overwhelmed with repair requests every single day there were at least six students coming in with you know a cracked screen keys falling off spilled the drink on there which I mean, all also kinds of makes stuff. you think that these children really didn't have much responsibility for what happened to the why laptops. would they i mean they have no money they have no skin in the game their taxpayers uh, paid for laptops i'm sure they were very beautiful the first day they uh, got them but then you know in the hands of people who don't actually own the property they're not going to treat it like they would treat it if they it were their own and, even and if- also no obligation to pay for the repairs sure that's true and so and, and even if the you know one laptop lasts through a year 
they're still going to want to use that next year. I don't know if it gets reassigned to a different student if, or if it stays with the student. I, I believe the three that years. it stays with the student. That's how it works in places that I've actually lived where they've had these sort of things. Do they then, after the students with middle school, right? So after the uh, the third year, because middle schools are typically a three year thing. Uh, so after the third year, that person goes on to high school. Then does the laptop go into a new student? No, does they it keep it until all the way graduation. High school. Okay, all right. So I guess that's good. That way, you're not at the very least getting a hand me down from some other student who has abused it, and yeah, then you so get this crappy you're, laptop. You're familiar with all the things that are wrong with it. Sure, because you've owned it. Um, and then, you know, okay, it'd be one thing, I guess, if you know the student got to keep this laptop the entire time, which is good. But on the other hand, uh, you know, the, most of them aren't taking good care of it. So you've got issues with repairs constantly. And who knows how much that costs? I mean, it's the laptops in the beginning aren't cheap because in a lot of cases, they're going to get Macintoshes. I know we're uh, where I was growing up when I went to school, it was all Macs. There was only one computer lab that had Windows computers in it. Every other computer in the school was a Macintosh. So I right, imagine because they generally get some kind of deal from, from Apple. Apple. Hey, buy our computers and we'll give them to you at you know half price or whatever. Yeah. So I want to continue with that story here, but we've actually got Mike on the line in Minnesota listening to WNMT. Hey, Mike, you're on the air on Free Talk Live. Do we have Mike in Minnesota? Mike going once. Mike, uh, can you hear me? I have you now. Hello? Go ahead, Mike. All righty. How's it going there? Good. I, just one quick thing for Mark. Uh, Mark is not I here. I was listening. He's not there today. Okay. Uh, well, I listened when he was telling his incident. But anyway, uh, I was I came home from work one time, and this was years ago, and I found my wife dead. Oh, my goodness. And the first thing I did is felt for a pulse. And, of course, she was already getting a little stiff, so I called 911. And the next thing I know, there's nine cops in my house going through every single square inch. Three of them are asking me questions simultaneously, some at the same time. And, uh, you know, like I knew I was in shock. And then they just said, would you consider coming down and taking a lie detector test? And I thought, oh, you know, why not? And I says, but I would like to call our son. And they said, well, you're not under arrest, and, but you can't talk to nobody. and You can't call nobody. What? So... I went down there, and while they were waiting for the uh, lie detector specialist to come in, because this was uh, 9 o'clock at night. What year of the uh, – when was this? This was in uh, 2005. And they, they're still pulling out the lie detector? Uh, yes, yes. And I, I, I had no reason to – so I said, yes, I would do it. But in the meantime, the detective took me in his office while we're waiting for the guy to get there, and he's saying, look, you know what? Why don't you just admit to me you murdered your wife and we'll go easy on you? Wow. And he kept harping and harping and saying, what would people say about you? I said, I have no idea. Finally, I said, I don't know what you're thinking, but we were together for 34 years. And he said, well, did you have a large insurance policy? I said, there was not one cent. Well, anyway, the lie detector guy came in. And for two hours, he asked me question after question after question. And, uh, oh, of course, when I first got there, they said, you need to sign this. And I know it was, you know... Uh, for duress, so, you know, that they wouldn't, I couldn't come back on them. But I knew that I had nothing to hide. And But for two and a half hours, he harped and harped about, you know, what would people say? And, and then uh, with the lie detector test, they just went on and on and on. And finally, they uh, concluded that uh, it wasn't uh, what it was. But I, on the other hand, I had just paid for my wife's license and my son wanted it and they said we're going to keep that as evidence because we may come back five or ten years later and charge you with murder when you said you were paying for her license what do you mean what does it mean you know i, I paid for a driver's license okay. to get her driver's license and had her picture on it and my son wanted that as uh, you know so something from his and they said no we're keeping that as mm. evidence in case we decide to charge you with murder later well anyway they had the autopsy it, it was ruled you know they found out it was a massive heart attack and oh. But I will always carry guilt thinking that if I wasn't at work, I could might have saved her. But it was just the idea to have to go through that and not being able to call my son or anybody for like six and a half, seven hours. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah. I don't know how the police can say that you're not under arrest 
You don't have to come down and talk to the lie detector person. But if you're going to come down and talk to the lie detector person, you can't talk to your son or make a phone call? That sounds like a lie to me. Not to mention, like, the story is really heartbreaking. And you must have been very upset at the time to not let you call any family members and inform them what happened or, you know, at least be able to speak to anyone. Like, that's that's very harsh. Like, I I don't feel like they're treating you very humanly. No, well, no, and, and and you know, it's it was hard, and I knew I was in shock, and it, it took a while. Be, I'll always feel guilty, but it's just the fact that uh, they, I think they went about it the wrong way, and they told me, well, we're being accused of not doing our job, and they just went at thing after thing, and with nine of them, and them going through every single square inch in my house, and then they took confiscated 45 bottles of, of medicine, not to mention the uh, medical papers that uh, I had when the wife got out of the hospital because the day before I had her in the hospital. And they told her to go home and drink fluids. And Right. So why would so they assume kinda, before they even ex- like figured out all the evidence if you were the murder? Like, why would they tell you that you murdered her? They always they even- presume. I mean, their, their number one suspect is always the spouse. I mean, in almost every situation where a husband or wife dies, it's the spouse who's the number one suspect. And there's usually good reason for that. I mean, it's usually not some right, random killer. Right, but it was just the immediate assumption that his wife was murdered. Oh, yeah. Instead I mean, of assuming it was natural causes. Instead well, of doing they, investigation, they, they, yeah. Right, they, they always they jump to conclusions. You have to excuse me, my cat's trying to get in two oh. cents, too. But, uh, but the thing was that they were asking me, what would my neighbors say? And I said, look, I have no idea what anybody would say. Well, did they hear you argue? I said, I don't know, possibly. I said, I don't know who listens and who says what about anybody. And uh, But anyway, it, you know, I wasn't found uh, guilty or anything, and they just— Thank uh, goodness. How would you have done it differently? This, I mean, if you could do it all over again, obviously, you know, without— hope, If you could do it all over again, I'm sure you wouldn't want your wife to die. But if you could do the rest no. of, the, uh, of it over again when the police were demanding or asking you to take the lie detector, would you have done it, knowing what you know now? It, yes, because I had nothing to hide. But I would would have called my son before I uh, before anything else before they got there, because he I was living in another state and he was living in Minnesota. Hmm. Do you feel like the lie detector somehow helped you uh, prove that you had nothing to hide, or was it just a frustration that ultimately you know there was never they, anything they had in the first place? So had you not taken it, it wouldn't have damaged you. I found that to be. Uh, really, because it was one of those that they put not only on my fingers, on my chest, on my waist, and Sounds the questions that, that they they asked. I mean, it didn't bother me, but uh, you know, they would ask me things like, "Did I ever in my life intend to ha- put harm to anybody?" Wow. And of, Mike, thanks of for telling I your story, really man. I do appreciate it. There's more coming up here on Free Talk Live. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar. It's a hot new novel that has a lot of people talking. It explores what our government's reaction to a U.S. currency collapse would be. And when the government nationalizes all supply chains in an effort to keep order, the sentiment voiced towards such a tyranny is, we're not picking the fight. The government already did that. We'll just be fighting back for a change. This is a great book, but don't take my word for it. Look at the reviews on Amazon. Bernie says, Crashed is a really terrifying trip. It is thought-provoking. It makes you wonder, what if? Could this happen? Gary Jones adds, This is an excellent book. It is also a little scary because it could very well be true. I hope it's fiction, and Julia Moffat calls it a gripping read and the most exciting, insightful book this year. Crashed is a fast-paced read that has two-thirds of its Amazon reviewers calling for a sequel. This book is totally worth your time. It's well-researched, liberty-oriented, realistic, gripping, and gritty. Do yourself a favor and don't miss this one. Get your copy at Amazon. Crashed, The Death of the Dollar by William Cooper. Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. 
or the realist, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me, government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. D free. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Just dial toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN, 855-450-3733. My Magic Mud. Three amazing words for an incredible product that seems counterintuitive. You'd think if you're smearing black stuff all over your teeth that it's not going to help them get whiter. But in point of fact, it does. Uh, My Magic Mud was created by Jessica Armon, a liberty-loving homeschool mother of three. And it's a holistic remedy for your teeth that removes plaque and detoxifies the mouth of bacteria that cause cavities. The product gives you a dentist clean every time you use it, and it's gentle on the enamel. The ingredients in My Magic Mud are also used as dietary supplements, so not only is this an effective whitener, it's also safe to swallow it. My Magic Mud Teeth Whitening Powder. It strengthens your teeth and promotes healthy gums, reverses sensitivity, and soothes any pain you might be dealing with. Go to MyMagicMud.com. Get your jar today. In fact, another one, uh, we just got another one here at the LRN Studios. It's great stuff. And it actually, uh, you'll see, I think you're going to see an effect the first time out, especially if you're somebody who's a coffee drinker or smoker. Uh, you'll see, and Mark, is, he definitely saw an effect the first time out. Uh, a friend of mine used My Magic Mud, and there was a drastic, uh, noticeable difference. And, you know, normally with these whiteners out there, it's just a bunch, it seems like just a bunch of BS. I don't know if you guys have ever tried any of the whitener, like the chemical stuff, but. I don't believe like it. Like the strips it works. you lay on your yeah, tongue. Yeah, the strips. I've tried the strips yeah, on the teeth those don't and work. all that. No, and they're really work. mushy. Yeah, so this is fun. My Magic Mud's actually fun to use. It gets your teeth clean, and uh, you know you don't need toothpaste with this stuff. This is a tooth powder. MyMagicMud.com. But you still need to use toothpaste separate from this, no. right? No? No, you do not. No, this cl- clears off all the bacteria from your teeth. 
Not at all. No more tooth uh, toothpaste necessary. I mean, you can still, you can mix it up if you want to, um, but this is a pretty neat product, and I recommend it. MyMagicMud.com. So back to uh, the story here. We're talking about the school laptop situation, and we've been kind of all over the map. We've got th- three or four different threads open here for uh, for topics, and of course you can bring up anything. We still have to get back to the porn thing, and then Ellen's going to tell us about Skynet. Uh, but, uh, Daryl, you were sharing with us a story in the last hour about a school system. It was the Hoboken area. Hoboken, New Jersey. Uh, where they, you know, a few years back, they started up this program with every kid gets a laptop. Every seventh grader gets a laptop. And then they get to keep it all the way through the rest of their school career. Right. So they're in the fifth year now, mm-hmm. meaning that every seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grader has a laptop. So the seventh graders are now seniors. The, the seniors right. this year have had them for the five years. But they brought an IT guy in, and he says this has been an absolute nightmare. Repairs every single day. We can't even get caught up. What's the rest of the story? So the program was a complete disaster teenagers with laptops i mean this is not going to go well teenagers with laptops they didn't pay for and have no responsibility for whatsoever they're going to treat that just like anything else you give them at school like it's not theirs yeah and they're going to do with it what they want to do not what you tell them because you know they're sure. reckless and they have no concept of the repercussions of their actions they're going to crack through the security system go on facebook download porn etc torrents whatever and you said the internet connection was being bogged down at the right, school. Right, because you know everybody that lived in the neighborhood wound up getting the, the password. password. Yeah. So people that weren't even students were just taking laptops into the parking lot and right. getting free Wi-Fi. You know, why should I have to pay Wi-Fi or you know buy my own internet when I can just walk across the street to the school and mm-hmm. use theirs? So the district is now telling all of the students to turn in their laptops. And that they are going to be destroyed. The article from Reason says that the Los Angeles Unified Schools experienced a similar problem when administrators attempted to give every student in the district an iPad. According to Allison Powell, the vice president of, or rather, for state and district services at INOCAL, the International Association for K-12 Online Learning, Such programs are common and commonly end up causing more headaches than they solve. Mm -hmm. She says, probably in the last few months, I've had quite a few principals and superintendents call and say, quote, I bought these 500 iPads or 1,000 laptops because the district next to us has them. (laughs) Now what do I do? Yeah. (laughs) So So they go into this with no business plan. They just throw all this money at pieces of technology that these children don't even understand they like, don't appreciate they right. don't know how to use it and they don't know how expensive it is and certainly they're just going to take advantage of whatever free time they have with it right and a lot of times because it's not the school district's money they're getting some grant from the feds to buy this stuff so what do we care you know it's free money it's free laptops it's a free bear cat just the fact that somebody asked that question though like i bought all these these expensive <laughs> pieces of equipment now what do i do with it like it's just it really shows the the lack of forethought that went into this. Yeah. I remember uh, when I was in high school, I got kind of I forget what it was I got in trouble for, but I got it. Yeah, I, oh, I remember what it was. I got on the principal's computer through the the network uh, that they had set up. He didn't <laughs> he didn't have a password or something like that. I was able to easily like log into his computer, <laughs> and I got caught red-handed by one of the teachers doing it. And instead of punishing me, they let me join the tech team where I actually got a half a credit uh, to go around and fix problems on the, on the computers around wow, the school. Wow, that's lucky. So yeah, that worked out for me but i mean it was enough of a pain just to try to help the teachers know how to use the computers that they were assigned to have uh i mean it would be it, it has to be an absolute nightmare to deal with students who i remember how i was in middle and high school and i was a punk man i wouldn't have I don't know how I would have treated it. I mean, I've always liked electronics, so maybe I would have treated the laptop better than the average student. But at the same time, I never liked the school. So I don't know how that would have. I don't know how those two factors would have ironed out. Like, I'm kind of the obsessive. uh, Like, I want to make sure my phone screen and my laptop screen doesn't have dust all over it. It drives me crazy. Uh, But at the same time, if it was a school-provided piece of equipment, maybe I wouldn't have taken the same level of care to it. 
Yeah, I, I can't even imagine what it would have been like in school to have had a laptop mm-hmm. because it was my senior year or might have been my junior year when they did this thing. All right, everybody come to the library. You know, they brought in different classes. We now have this thing called the Internet. Yeah. And they told us what the Internet is. Why would I use that? I've got the card catalog. I can go find what I want using that. Or- well, Ellen's the closest to high school here of our group, having graduated a few years back, not too long 2012. ago. 2012. Yeah, so relatively recently. I mean, was any of this going on where you were in Mich- Michigan? Well, I mean, I've pretty much had access to internet and computers since I was in kindergarten. Like, I remember Google was the first website they showed us. So, like... Mm. I know that everybody that was in my grade is very familiar with using the internet and pieces of technology. Like, I was kind of behind everyone else because I didn't own a smartphone by 10th grade. Hmm. But, uh, yeah, there was definitely a lot of, like, there was several rooms in the high school full of computers. They they all had, like, 28 computers each. And, uh, you know... Being in high school, you don't have a lot of patience, so if your computer froze, you're just, like, banging Hit on it. the keys, <laughs> clicking a hundred times. Like, th- pe- yeah, there was pieces destroyed all the time. I believe it. We'll come back with more, and Daryl, how much more do we got here? In uh, we're done with this. All right, we'll come back with your thoughts. If you've got any experience with using technology at a government school, how did that work out? The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, or were you a part of one of these laptop programs? Tell us about your experience. If you need to say happy birthday, happy anniversary, thank you, or simply I'm thinking of you, ProFlowers.com is the key. ProFlowers has stunning bouquets, like the best-selling 100 blooms for $19.99. Plus, ProFlowers will include a glass vase for free. Sending someone a wonderful surprise of beautiful flowers sent fresh from the fields is easy. Choose the bouquet you like, pick the delivery date, and each order is 100% guaranteed. Plus, all bouquets from Pro Flowers are guaranteed to last at least seven full days. Beautiful, fragrant flowers, picked fresh and sent to your loved one for lasting enjoyment. To get this incredible savings and send someone 100 gorgeous blooms with a free vase for $19.99, go to ProFlowers.com, click the blue microphone in the top right corner, and enter code PLOW. That's ProFlowers.com. Click the mic and enter code P-L-O-W. If you're looking for work, there's a piece of paper more important than your resume. It's the cover letter attached if you're snail mailing or the email to which you attach your resume. Make it four short paragraphs. Paragraph one, say that you're applying for work. The person you're sending to gets a ton of mail about all sorts of things. If you have a password, that's your first sentence. Tom Nelson tells me you and I should meet. Paragraph 2, what you do and how that relates to the opening. Be as specific as possible. Paragraph 3, why you want this particular job. I'm originally from Boston, so I know the market well. I have family and friends in the area, so this would be a homecoming for me. Paragraph 4, unless the job posting stipulates no calls, and I will call you to follow up. Thank you in advance for your time. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live. Oh, if only everyone were to behave in the way I think they should behave, humanity would be better off. Again, it's just trying to impose one's vision on others. You can't be humane to others by being inhumane in the first place. And by forcing them to behave or do things that you want them to do or think in the way that you want them to think, that's inhumane. 
You're not respecting their choices as a free, sovereign individual. And that's what liberty is all about. You respect the rights of others to live their lives, even in self-destructive ways that you think are a bad choice, so that in turn, you have the right to live your life in any way that you choose. That's what it's all about. And as soon as you violate that, as soon as you take a step into the world of initiating force on others, then anything's game. You validated that it's okay to use force to get your way as far as changing other people's behavior. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You are invited to bring up anything that you want. Just dial right on in toll-free here. The Pro XPN toll-free line, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can do uh, Skype as well. We can take you there. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to join us uh, via that method. In fact, if you've got Skype, it generally sounds better than uh, your phone. So go ahead. And if you don't have Skype yet on your smartphone device, you can actually put it onto your smartphone and then use Skype to call us from your smartphone. You'll sound better than if you just call from your phone right, like a regular phone call because Skype can do what's called wideband audio, meaning that you can hear the full range of the uh, the human voice instead of that kind of tinny phone sound. It's worth the effort. It will take a little bit of effort. And then, again, once you get Skype installed, send a request to username lrn.fm. It'll be approved, and we'll, uh, it'll be easy for you to call from that point on in the future. Uh, and again, our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Do you need focus and are feeling fatigued? You're trying to get that extra edge when it counts. Look into Modafinil from ModUp.net. Businessmen around the world are talking about how Modafinil from ModUp.net is making the difference in their work and giving them the critical edge that they need. Studies show one in five students are using this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, fighting off fatigue, and greater focus overall so you can get things done. And uh, they make it affordable over at ModUp.net for everyone to take advantage of the benefits of Modafinil by being 80 to 85% lower in price than the brand name. But don't mistake low prices for an inferior quality. They ensure that purity and potency are consistent to that of the branded version. Now remember, Free Talk Live is an international radio show, and ModUp.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. You get a great discount when you pay for, well with Bitcoin at modup.net. Bitcoin users, you get a 33% discount. And whether you're paying with Bitcoin or not, use code FTL to get 10 free tablets with your order. That's Modafinil, world-class service at a great price, available through modup.net. M-O-D-U-P, modup.net. Let's go to the phones here. Your calls are welcome. Whatever's on your mind, we can get back to the porn topic here, plus... Uh, artificial intelligence. It's coming along, and Ellen's got an update on that for us. But first, we've got Eric Freerock calling from Cop Block Radio. Hello, Eric. Hey. Hey there. I uh, wanted to call it because you guys, a couple days ago, I believe, talked about the letters to the editor. Uh, one was from a hater, and one was from somebody who was seemed to be in support of the Freeze Day Project. Yes, uh, and I actually posted those letters. We read them on the air here, but I also posted them on on freekeen.com, which has been fairly busy in the last few days. You may have to scroll down a little bit, but there is an article there uh, which has those. One of them was the Concord Monitor, which was where the article from the person who appeared to appreciate the Free State Project and Free State Project participants, that is the idea of people... Uh, Free State Project is the idea of people who love freedom, like those of us on this radio show, moving together to the same place. That's the reason why, uh, Daryl, you and I know Ellen, and Ellen knows us. and you know, we, Why we know each other. Right. None of us would have likely have met had it not been for the Free State Project, and it's really an amazing thing. So go ahead with your thoughts, Eric. What about those letters to the editor? Well, that was kind of one of the things, The like the hater level, the, the hater letter pretty much said that... They oppose their homes and state that we love being uh, – and we've supported, taken away, and forcefully changed to suit their needs by a group of invaders. And it seems really 
really strange to me, like this uh, kind of mindset being in New Hampshire. And then the, now you're a New Hampshire native. I am a New Hampshire native, so you know I I don't see you as a group of invaders. So you don't, <laughs> don't think see... that when people move here from a different state that they're invading on your territory? Not really, unless you're from New York and wanted to make it into New York. <laughs> I, I do find it odd. On. I that's what's been happening. I do find it odd that it was a state rep who was originally from Rhode Island that made the statement of. Uh, about a year and a half, a little over a year and a half ago, about the free staters moving here, trying to change the way of life, and that we are supposedly the biggest threat to the state. Mm -hmm. Exactly, which is the thing that I think is really laughable, because really what's going on is trying to uh, revert back to the way it was when it was good and not and stave off all these, you know, tax Massachusetts policies that have kind of creeped up here. And that's the last place we want to be is like Massachusetts. So, well, my big question for this author, this person who wrote this hate piece, which is kind of an amusing thing because the title of it is basically I'm a lover, not a hater. And then the guy spends pa several paragraphs explaining what it is that he hates about the Free State Project and Freekeen.com, which is my website on which, Daryl, you are one of the bloggers. Yes. And so he expresses quite a bit of hate in the article, but then calls himself a lover at the end. It's a very confused uh, letter, a confused missive Anyway, he uh, one of the things he says in there is that he loves the state and he wants to basically keep things as they are and feels like you know that we're going to destroy the, his state and I and I wonder what he really means by that. Does he mean when he says the state, the the mountains and the forests and the lakes, or does he actually mean the political organization, the the criminal gang known as the state? Because if it's the latter, then yes, he should be concerned. The state is in jeopardy. Uh, its legitimacy is being threatened by the Free State Project participants. Like you know, there's folks going to go out and do a DUI checkpoint activism again tonight in Manchester, yeah. for instance. Well, this this whole point is completely incoherent to me because. You know, they, they're fighting to keep things as they are by, you know, restricting things much more than they were before. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. it, you can even look back through history like 10 years ago, the city wasn't the same as it is now. Like things are always going to change. No There's matter more what. cops in New Hampshire now than uh, 10 years ago. Too. Right. And it's not even them trying to keep things as they are. It's true. them trying to grow the size of the government. And pushing back when somebody tries to, you know, reduce any of the size of government or, you know, keep them in check in any way. Well, I don't know if you can claim that. I think there's a lot of people that just like things to stay the way they are because that's much easier. But it's an illusion, right? Because things never stay the way they are. Right. I mean, change is inevitable. Even within the state, change is it's going to happen. And they just Although, don't want to see change happen in the way they don't want to see it. Although maybe by the way they are, you mean the every year the school budget goes up somewhere between half a percent to mm -hmm. three percent. The taxes go up by somewhere upwards of ten percent. Well, the thing is, yeah, people because that's how it's been my entire life. <laughs> they have a routine. They know what what taxes they have to pay. You know, they know what laws they have to obey. They know how fast they should be driving on a certain road. They know like what time of year they have to go to the voting booth, that kind of thing. Like it's very regular and you know, they don't want to have to change any little aspect of what goes on in their life just because that will make them think about things more and that's difficult for some people. That's the thing. You you hit the nail on the head. They don't want to, to think. think about things. Yeah, you're absolutely right, right about that. Go to, ahead, Eric. To to Derek's budget point, like he, he he didn't mention that the school population has actually gone down and so has the overall population of Keene has gone down. So why are these budgets we going up every year? Well, if you listen to the secretary or the treasurer of the school district, we have to increase the budget because we have fewer students. <laughs> and of course, having more students means you need a bigger budget as well. Yeah, it's frustrating, Eric, and I, I agree with uh, with Ellen and, and Daryl. You know, these are folks who don't want to think. And the thing about the, the liberty activists, at least here in the Keene area in New Hampshire and to a lesser extent in other parts of New Hampshire, is we 
force people to think. At least anybody who's paying attention will have to think about some pretty hard issues. And one of them, of course, being the Robin Hood uh, case, where people are getting saved on a regular basis from getting parking tickets in downtown Keene. Also, of course, uh, the historic 420 celebrations brought to the forefront the issue of cannabis, decriminalization, legalization. And for people who have this sort of uh, pie-in-the-sky, rose-colored glasses uh, mentality about how everything's just perfect and we're living in this free country. Well, when we start pointing out that people are getting arrested, as you guys do over at CopBlock.org regularly, for crimes that don't involve a victim, that's got to be tough to reconcile with your belief that this is a free country, and that can create some cognitive dissonance. There's more coming up on Free Talk Live. Angioprim can unclog blocked arteries and improve blood flow in all parts of your body. Angioprim is oral chelation. Easy, simple, liquid oral chelation. You take it with juice before breakfast and forget about it. Angioprim works fast, unlike old-fashioned chelation that takes hours. Just log on to angioprim.com. That's angioprim, A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M, angioprim.com. Angioprim users say they have more energy, more strength, more endurance. Increased circulation and blood flow will make all your body parts work better. Log on to angioprim.com. Prim.com to get more information on how you can get started and start feeling better, having fun, and doing more again. Lots more. Talk to a trained AngioPrim consultant. Call AngioPrim toll free at 877 882 7221. That's 877 882 7221. Or log on for complete information. AngioPrim.com. That's AngioPrim.com. Find out how AngioPrim can work for you. Get the facts about AngioPrim at AngioPrim.com. Hey folks, this is Larry Crisp for BabyBoomerBackupPlan.com. I'm sure you know, this economy sucks. We all realize that the American economy is tremendously unstable right now and will likely get much worse. There's monumental debt, government bailouts, stock and real estate bubbles that are primed to pop at any moment, which can flush away most or all of your retirement savings. This type of movement has enormous consequences. Virtually zero sectors of the economy are hiring and workforce participation is at record lows. Financial trouble is right here at our doorstep. But if you move right now and develop a backup plan immediately, this could be the most profitable time of your life. Proportionately, more millionaires were created during the Great Depression than at any time in our history. Get my free report at babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789 for my free report. 888-507-8789 and prepare to profit as history repeats itself. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm.
Talk Live. Bring up anything toll free here at 855 453. That's 855 450 3733. Hey, we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Don't forget, join us online at freetalklive.com. If you're enjoying the program, please get your shopping done with us. You can do that by going to shop.freetalklive.com when there's something that you need to buy. In fact, Daryl, you were looking at a USB to quarter inch audio jack converter thing. I didn't think these things existed, but Amazon's got them. So I actually went ahead and paid for it. Sweet. What was it, like three bucks or something? Uh, three dollars and seventy nine cents. First of all, you couldn't find something like that if you went to a local music store. And if you could, it would probably be thirty dollars. So I like you likely got a heck of a deal. Yeah, I found it for thirty dollars on some music stores website <laughs> couldn't find it on radio shack at all so uh anyway if there's something you need amazon probably has it you know them they've got great selection huge amounts of products available to you from the brand names you trust and some of the brand and the names you've never heard of before but you know they've got it all and of course uh, the user reviews make it easy to pick what you actually end up getting ultimately it's really useful and of course you can get uh, you can buy the stuff you want and get a great price and free talk live gets a cut of the profits if you enter through shop.freetalklive.com there's links there for amazon in the uk canada and the united states so go and get your shopping done and feel good because you're getting a great deal on the stuff you want and free talk live is benefiting so once again go to shop.freetalklive.com we go back to skype where we've got the pizza guy on the line in north dakota uh pizza guy you're on free talk live yeah, I was uh, listening to an episode the other day where you were talking with Johnny Ray about voting. Yes. And I was wondering if we could uh, maybe recap that and talk about your position on voting. All right, sure. Well, I don't know what Ellen and uh, I, might, I can probably guess Daryl's position on this. I don't know what Ellen's position, position is going to be. But to recap, Johnny Ray, our Tuesday night co-host, is vehemently against voting. He believes it is a... Uh, waste of time and even that it's um, you know possibly morally wrong to participate in it i don't like putting words in the, in his mouth because he's not here to uh, to actually defend his position but suffice it to say he does not participate inside the system and does not believe that other people should um, my position is that i'll do anything i can that will increase uh, freedom in this uh, in this world in this place that uh, that i inhabit and if i can vote for a liberty oriented candidate somebody who i don't feel dirty about casting a vote for somebody who you know actually espouses the ideas of freedom and understands you know the non-aggression principle and that you know in order to be free you have to allow others to be free if there's a candidate out there who really seems to get the ideas of freedom i don't have any problem with voting for him and i'm curious ellen what about you how do you feel about voting well i feel pretty similarly to you i just i don't think that it's right to complain about uh government bureaucrats and people who are in power if you don't Try as much as you can or do anything within your power to help change that. So I, you know, I think that, you know, there's nothing morally wrong with voting. Like, yes, it's very unfortunate that there's this system created where we have, you know, these rulers it, that we're voting for. And sometimes it seems like uh, it doesn't really matter what you choose. But I still feel like it's the principle of the thing. Like, if I can do something you to should. increase my freedom and everyone else's, then yes, I will do anything that, you know, even remotely has the possibility of playing out that way. I wish that my vote for none of the above was actually a binding vote and that if a plurality mm. of people voted for none of the above, that the office would be vacant. Well, don't they have that in uh, Nevada where no, to no, some yeah. extent it is not binding, but it's actually on the ballot. It's on like the ballot here. by law. Right. But it's not binding, meaning that in the rare instance where none of the above actually winds up winning the election, the second place will get it. Then the human candidate that had the most votes will then get What's elected. What's the point? The human candidate? Well, none of the above is not a human. <laughs> well, it could be if you well, change your not, name. Well, it's not even a candidate. There is no, no candidate. Well, no, the candidate is nobody. And that is on the ballot in Nevada. And it should be. Yes. It should be on the ballot everywhere so people have the opportunity to voice their displeasure with the main two options, which and is usually all they get. Well, one of our supposed representatives here in Keene last year actually put forth a bill to the state house to put none of the above on the ballot. Oh wow. And did it even make it out of committee? Well, 
everything comes out of committee. It came out of committee as inexpedient to legislate right. because the people on the committee didn't understand what would happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Even though the bill specified what would happen, they were confused. Yeah, they probably didn't read it. No, they read it, oh, but really? they were confused. Well, wait a second. So if none of the above winds up winning and it's something to where you elect four people, then nobody takes office, then how does that work? How are they going to conceptualize not having their jobs? Or not anybody having their jobs right. for that matter. Yeah, it'd be really interesting. I mean, what is do you know, Daryl? Since the Nevada has had it put into effect, what, how does none of the above do at the ballot? I mean, what's the what are the results? There was an election. I think it was one of the primary elections earlier this year where mm-hmm. none of the above not only won but had a majority of the wow. vote. <laughs> and how new is this out there? Uh, it's been on. I'm thinking since the late nineties. So this is not new then. Okay. It's not new. But it's how been do, on I mean, for how does a it while. Do? You don't live there, so you probably don't really know. But Actually, I, I keep a close look on election really results do. across the country. You. I feel like and you might know. in a lot of races, it winds up getting you know, 2 3%. That's all? And you'd think none of the above would do better than that. Well, maybe well, people don't realize that if they vote none of the above, then that will actually be taken into account. Or maybe they don't. Re- or maybe they know that it won't count because it's not. It, well, like even if you, even if it wins, it doesn't win. There's still a lot of people that don't vote at all. So some people could say that everybody that doesn't vote is voting, voting for, for none, none of the, the above. above. Good point. So uh, go ahead. I mean, we've just come to get uh, rambling here. Your thoughts, Pizza Guy? Oh, hang on a second. I'm going to turn you up there because you were counting money or something in the background. Oh, yeah, no, I dropped a screw. Okay. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Go I'm ahead. Patient. Yes, no. Um, so, yeah, so that was two in favor of voting and one maybe a voter. I don't know. But so what I is think all three are, of us are in favor of it. In favor of voting. And by what? I, I, by oh, what principle? Just by, because by, I vote doesn't mean that I'm in favor of voting. Wait a minute. How can you do something you're not in favor of? I would love to see a system in which unless a majority of people go to the polls, that everything is invalid. Okay, that'd be great, Daryl. But the point is, you're going to vote. You must be in favor of it on some level. Well, ideally, he would like to not vote, but I guess voting right. okay. is more Ideally, favorable right I would now. love to live in a society where voting right. doesn't happen. For now, though, you're in favor but, of it, given the fact you know, that you do it's it. It's more favorable than not voting currently. Right. Yeah. And so I think we're getting exactly where I wanted to go. I'm kind of leading you down a path here. So by what principle do you vote? What's the principle? It's the principle of, of, of pragmatism, right? And how do you define the pragmatic action? I would call it a principle of harm reduction, personally. Uh, I don't think that voting for none of the above is very pragmatic. <laughs> I vote to express my dissent with yeah. the system. Um, well, I can I do it for harm reduction purposes. You know, not that the candidates I vote for win, but should they actually win, there is a greater chance that those candidates will do something to try to make the government smaller, to try to stop the violence against peaceful people. And I'd like to see that happen someday. So if voting for someone who promises those things could possibly bring it about, then it's worth the effort uh, to me. And I see that here in New Hampshire, we actually do have liberty-minded people getting elected as both Democrats and Republicans here. And, uh, you know, I think that's great. So... And so I've called them. many times before. In well, wait a minute. Let's let Ellen answer the question. What about the principle? Is there a principle behind voting for you? Um, I think voting pr- is the principle, really. Like, I, I have not registered myself, so I haven't oh, voted tisk, yet. Tisk. I'm in favor of it, and I want to get around to doing it. But I well, just, the good news about New Hampshire, Ellen, time. is that yeah. you can actually show up. You don't have to find time to register in New Hampshire, unlike oh, really? most states. Uh, New Hampshire actually allows you to just walk in the day of the the election. So you can just waltz on in and sign up to vote right there and then. That would be so easy if I'd known that. Yep, there you go. Now you know. And okay. now everybody listening knows. <laughs> it's really handy. Well, I mean, I, like I said, though, um, I support, you know, I'm in favor of voting just because I think that, you know, it's, it is much more beneficial than just not giving your opinion at all because then you're going to be, you know, overshadowed by everybody else who is. 
Well, the thing about voting is it's not actually opinion, right? Because you're just registering a vote for somebody. Nobody really knows why you voted for that person. They don't know if you voted for the person because you agree with everything they say or because you agree that they, you know, or you only agree that you only agree with them more than you agree with the other candidate or you were voting for them because of the lesser of two evils. Right, but to some extent that is expressing an opinion. Because it's poor, poor communication, though. It is. I mean, it must be very vague if there's only a few candidates, but still, it's expressing a f- like some you're in favor of something that they support. All and right. if only one person shows up to the poll, then that one person decides everything. Pizza guy, hang on. I know you said you were going somewhere with this, so we're going to bring you back here if you don't mind. Just... Stick with us. Our number three is on the way. Plenty of time for your calls and thoughts. 855 450 free. We still have the porn story plus AI to talk about. Not together. Free talk live. Safety, safety, <laughs> safety. I'm saying it three times. Studies show you need to hear something three times to remember it. So remember, safety, safety, safety is important to me, me, me. That's why I love Granger. Granger has the products to help keep our facilities safe and people safer. Say it with me, kid. Safety, safety, safety from Granger, Granger, Granger. When you think safety, think Granger. Get it? Got it? Good. Call clickgranger.com slash safety or stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. Lumber Liquidators buys direct from the mills, giving you the largest selection of hardwood flooring at the lowest prices. Right now, choose from over 150 hardwoods on sale, including beautiful and stylish white plank pre-finished red oak for just $179 a square foot. That's less than half what you could pay at other stores. Plus, get Dream Home Laminate and Tranquility Vinyl Flooring for 20% off and bamboo for only $179. Go to LumberLiquidators.com today to find the store nearest you. More great deals and special 12-month financing available. But hurry, this sale ends Tuesday. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Comano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. And you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade. 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Friday, August 8th, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.92 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,311 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $591. Antiwar.com reports, The Obama administration wasted no time in using the latest ISIS advance as a pretext for military operations and have already been reported to have launched multiple airstrikes against ISIS targets on Thursday night. The reports came from both Kurdish officials and locals fleeing the attacked towns, but as of Thursday night, the Pentagon was denying these strikes. The attacks hit the towns of Gwur and Makmur, which the Kurdish Peshmerga unsuccessfully tried to recapture from ISIS on Wednesday. They both lie about 25 miles southwest of the Kurdish capital of Erbil. The U.S. attacks appear to be focused both on blunting the ISIS offensive amid ISIS threats of an attack on Erbil itself and on giving the Kurdish forces openings to try to take the offensive and reclaim lost territory. The Kurdistan regional government has been pushing for U.S. intervention since the weekend when ISIS seized control of Sinjar district in the nation's far northwest and rooted Kurdish fighters there. The Kurds have been successful in fending off ISIS up to that point, but the momentum seems to have shifted now with ISIS keen to grow its territory in that area. 
FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. TechCrunch reports, in late July, Wikipedia announced that it would accept donations in Bitcoin. In its first week of accepting Bitcoin, Wikipedia racked up $140,000 in new funds, according to Coinbase, the service that powers its cryptocurrency influx. Coindesk, a publication that tracks Bitcoin and other alternative digital currencies, heralds the news as suggesting the staying power of digital currency donations owing to the contribution of tax benefits and transaction cost savings. TechCrunch had previously reported that the Wikimedia Foundation, the parent company of Wikipedia, doesn't intend to hold Bitcoin but instead convert it to dollars at the time of donation. TechCrunch also noted that the foundation raised about $18.7 million last year, making the $140,000 in Bitcoin donations approximately 1% of its prior haul, but 1% in one week could add up to a tidy figure, provided Bitcoin donations continue. During the 2013 Porcupine Freedom Festival, Davi Barker presented an idea for a renegade psychological experiment. Since then, he has refined his idea and put his plan and research into writing. He explains, We aim to show the world beyond a shadow of a doubt that power corrupts absolutely and corrupt authority deserves no obedience. Authoritarian Sociopathy is available from Amazon.com, all major bookstores, and now available as an audiobook. Reuters reports, Moscow banned imports of food from the West on Thursday in retaliation against sanctions over Ukraine, a stronger-than-expected measure that isolates Russian consumers from world trade to a degree unseen since Soviet days. Moscow imposed a one-year ban on all meat, fish, dairy, fruit, and vegetables from the United States, the 28 European Union countries, Canada, Australia, and non-EU member Norway. Russia has become the biggest consumer of EU fruit and vegetables the second biggest buyer of U.S. poultry, and a major global consumer of fish, meat, and dairy products. Russian President Vladimir Putin ordered his government to adopt the measures in retaliation against Western countries, which impose sanctions on Russia's defense, oil, and financial sectors over its supposed support for rebels waging an insurrection in East Ukraine. In Eastern Ukraine, the Russian citizen who had led the Donetsk People's Republic stepped down in favor of a local man, a move that could provide some faint new hope for peace. Kiev has long said it could negotiate with locals, but never with foreigners it considers international terrorists. NATO Security General visiting Kiev in a show of support for Ukraine called on Russia to pull back from the brink of war against its neighbor. The Western Military Alliance says Moscow has massed troops on the border in preparation for a possible ground invasion. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. The Onion looks back at This Week in History. On July 17, 1980, Ronald Reagan accepted the nomination for president at the Republican National Convention in Detroit and delivered a speech in which he boldly promised that during his presidency, someone would body slam Andre the Giant. While admitting that the road would be long and hard and that it might take as long as seven years and two WrestleManias to get there, the former California governor vowed that under his administration, somebody, perhaps Ricky the Dragon Steamboat or a hulked up Hulk Hogan, would grab hold of the 500 pound behemoth and send his massive body smashing to the mat. The Republican nominee also went on to promise that by the end of his first term, Joni would marry Chachi, hair metal would achieve mainstream airplay, and Shelley Long would successfully make the leap from television to film. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. The porn industry, they are moving out. Whoa, hey, he's throwing money around. 
over there again. Nails or screws. He's got screws screws loose. Screws Screws are loose here on Free Talk Live. (laughs) We'll get back to uh, our caller there in a moment. Uh, Get that sound bite. Yeah, toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and we do have somebody on our Skype. But that doesn't mean that you can't call us on Skype. Just wait until that person is off the line, and we will take your call. thing with Skype is if someone's on with us, we can't put anybody else on hold. So even though we know if you call in right now, we'll see you calling, we can't put you on hold because it's just the limitation of the software. So uh, Skype username is lrn.fm. Ian in the studio with you tonight. Ellen. And Daryl. All right, let's go uh, back into the phone calls. We'll get to the porn story here in a little bit, which we barely got started earlier in the show. Pizza Dude is with us in North Dakota, and you were asking us about voting, and generally the response from the host on the show, at least tonight, was positive. If it were Tuesday night, Johnny Ray would likely be vehemently speaking against uh, the idea of voting or participating inside the system in any way. But I wanted to make sure you had a chance to get your thoughts out. You said you were trying to lead us somewhere, so uh, go ahead there, Pizza Guy. Well, I've called in favor of incrementalism before. And the principle behind incrementalism, as opposed to purism, is to say that, hey, we have to get from here to there. So how do we do that? Obviously, you know, if I wanted to be the change I want to see, I wouldn't vote because... I don't think voting should be binding to anybody. What, what does it matter what two wolves and a sheep agree on? Voting inherently is violent and immoral. That's the stance Johnny Ray takes, and that's the stance I would assume you would naturally take as well, Ian. No, um, why, why, would I take that the, uh, that, why would I take the position that voting is violence? I think it's a ridiculous position backed up with no evidence whatsoever. Uh, I, well, <laughs> I agree that it's a ridiculous uh, position, but that's because I'm an incrementalist. I believe that... Any step from here to there is harm reduction, and therefore we should encourage it. But you have to visualize where we are now, where we want to be, and what encourages steps from here to there. Right. And that's By the way, why- I can hear every mouse click that you make. I, I presume that's a mouse clicking in the oh, in the background, right. just so you know. Oh, geez, that's my wife across the room. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. (laughs) Really good microphone. Sensitive microphone there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that it's ridiculous to call voting violence. Now, it's certainly true that someone could vote for for a candidate who is a violence advocate, and then they would be backing someone who is advocating violence. But the act of voting itself, especially when casting a vote for a principled, liberty-oriented candidate who speaks against violence, uh, is I I don't see how you could argue at all that that's violence in any way. So let's talk about it maybe in numbers so that we can kind of kind of see where we're looking at. Let's call the status quo 100 violence, okay? 100 violence, you said? Yeah, let's just for a number so, okay. we, can a number so we can think about it reasonably, mathematically. All right. Uh, let's say status quo is 100 violence. Everybody out there is 100 violence. Principled liberty is zero violence, right? That's a Ron Paul, zero violence, okay? If you have the opportunity, there is no other candidate that your vote could matter for. You have the opportunity to vote for a 50 violence or a 25 violence. Will you vote for that one? If, if that person is elected, it will take the violence from 100, the status quo, down to 50. Would you vote for that? Yeah, because I support harm reduction. I mean, I would probably have to hold my nose and do it, uh, but I probably would do that simply because if fewer people are attacked during that person's uh, reign, then that would be an improvement. Daryl, Ellen? Do I have the option for writing in none of the above in your little hypothetical, or do I live in Oklahoma to where the only choice (laughs) is red team, blue team? Well, and this is the real world. Right, so you have to actually consider what your actions will take. You okay, vote- and in the real world, there are some states that allow write-in votes and some states that don't. Oklahoma, Nevada, uh, Louisiana, California, for most offices, do not allow write-in votes. And right, now- he's talking about a ridiculous, uh, you know, what if scenario here, right? The idea that you would somehow know or be able to quantify how violent a, a particular candidate's viewpoints are, who's, you know, one of the regular politicians, which of course you know they're lying to you. So that's why if it's just a regular Democrat versus a regular Republican, I'm not going to throw my weight usually in any way, shape, or form unless 
I somehow have some sort of idea that somebody in that race is liberty oriented. If I if there's not a stark contrast between the candidates, I, I won't bother with it, or I'll do the the write in or something like that. Ellen, and what so, about you? Right. So I was thinking, uh, you know, very similar with you, where that, uh, you know, if somebody is less violent than what is currently or the person that's currently in power, then of course I'm going to prefer that over the higher level of violence. Like any any level that's lower than what is there is going to be an improvement. So if there's, uh, you know, a Republican and a de- Democrat uh, fighting against each other for this one position, if, you know, if they're very similar and, um, you know, maybe I agree with the Republican slightly more than the Democrat, but still not enough to, like, win my vote over, I might prefer to not vote in that scenario where... You know, it there's only a marginal level of benefit that comes out of voting. But if there's somebody that's noticeably different and, uh, you know, you can very obviously tell that, you know, you might not agree with them on certain things like uh, abortion rights or, you know, birth control or something like that. But in most other areas, they're agreeable. I would prefer to have that instead of just not giving my opinion at all. And so here's where I'm trying to lead it. What I'm trying to say is that if you're willing to compromise enough with the system to vote and you're willing to reduce the harm and you take a look at what is out there, and because I know how you feel about this and I know I'm going to get attacked as soon as I say it, Dr. Rand Paul is, (laughs) see, he is that, he's exactly middle ground. No, he's not. (laughs) Exactly what he is. That's exactly what he is. No, Rand Paul is nowhere near middle ground. Rand Paul is a he he's a Republican yeah. who wants to do Republican y things. He no. is supporting, you know, throwing millions of dollars at Israel so that they can, you know, go on an offensive listen. against Gaza under the guise of defending themselves. Listen. No, listen. He wants to continue listen. the drug war. Rand Paul is a horrible liberty guy. He doesn't even call himself a libertarian. No, he does not. He calls listen. himself a libertarian Republican. He never uses the term libertarian without the term Republican attached to it. Wait, wait, wait. Just hear out this guy's opinion. So, you know, Rand Paul may be doing all of these terrible things, but what is he doing better than the other candidates? Nothing. All right, I want to get. Let's get uh, Pizza Guy's answer on this. Go ahead, Pizza no, Guy. Everything he does is better than everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. Please. Hold on. No. You you said no. everything. No. He no. co-sponsored no. the "Let's Support no. Israel's no. Bombing of Gazan Children" bill. How is co-sponsoring a bill to support Israeli bombing of children better than anything that anybody else in the Senate is you. doing? I'll tell you. Can I tell you, please? I'll tell you. Because everybody else wants to sponsor a bill that will kill 100 Israeli children. Rand Paul is out there saying, hey, how about instead we only kill 50 Israeli children? Do I agree uh, with killing Israeli no. children? He, he's no. not supporting killing Israeli children. He's supporting the Israeli military killing Gazan children. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that, look, obviously, in a, in a pure liberty world, if Rand Paul were to suddenly appear with the positions he has now and the talking points he has now from a pure liberty world, they'd be like, who is this crazy person? He wants to take us from zero to 50. But that's no, not the world we live in. We live in a world of 100 violence. And every single thing, you look at what the, he does, he has talking points. The mental gymnastics the that Rand Paul supporters have to go through to defend this guy is, I have to say, pretty amusing. And unfortunately, I'm going to probably get pretty sick of it soon because uh, as we get closer to this election it's inevitable that more people in the liberty side of things are going to start pimping this guy as though he's even a shadow of his father i've still got an open invitation to rand paul i will debate you anytime anywhere any topic hey uh thanks for the call pizza guy appreciate it uh appreciate hearing from you tonight and when i was answering questions about like when i would vote for somebody if there was a stark difference it was really only on the local level i'm not under any sort of uh, belief that anything's going to change at the federal level why bother with anything there it's free talk live more coming up 
Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F E E N P H O N E.com. In a far future universe, Earth's fleet is shattered, rife with guerrilla warfare, interspecies diplomacy, and full-scale interstellar combat. Humanity is about to face its trial by fire. Trial by Fire, book two in the Tales of the Terran Republic, sequel to the national best-selling and award-winning Fire with Fire by distinguished professor and author Charles Gannon. Get it now from Amazon through shop.freetalklive.com. On the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. If you are struggling to pay or haven't been making your student loan payments, listen carefully to this urgent alert. Have you been out of school for 10 or more years and you're still making your student loan payments? Are your student loans past due or even in default? Can't go back to school because of an old student loan problem? Fast Track Student Loans can get your student loans out of default, stop any wage garnishments, stop collection calls, and stop seizure of your tax refund. Give yourself a break. Stop the stress and get your student loan payments down to as little as $25 a month based on what you can afford to pay. One quick 10-minute call could help you solve your student loan problems. So call right now. Not available in all states. Payments may vary based on income. 800-215-6813. 800-215-6813. 800-215-6813. 800-215-6813. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up anything you want here toll free. 855 450 free and you can join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Hey, if you like Bitcoin or you like the idea of Bitcoin but haven't yet taken the first step to do anything about it, maybe you've just been busy. We're all busy. 
There's always something to be doing, and you know, something to uh, to occupy our time these days. Take a moment to go to blockchain.com and get your first Bitcoin wallet set up. If you get a Bitcoin or a fraction of a Bitcoin, because again, you can buy Bitcoins down to point, uh, I think eight decimal places at this yes. point. Uh, if you get a fraction of a Bitcoin, you might. Be really happy a few years from now because the value could go up dramatically. Now, it could go down. You never know what's going to happen. But you'll never know for sure. Uh, you'll never really have the chance to benefit if you don't have a Bitcoin wallet first. So to get a Bitcoin wallet, you just go to blockchain.com. If you've got an Android or iPhone device, you can have a Bitcoin wallet right there on your phone. If you don't have a smartphone yet, you can still get the Bitcoin wallet on the web through blockchain.com. So go there and get started in the amazing world of Bitcoin. There's some, also some great sites like weusecoins.com where you can go to uh, get started and kind of learning about Bitcoin. There's a less than two minute long video on the front page of WeUseCoins coins.com and then some really useful links in fact we're redoing right now the uh the, the keen area bitcoin flyer we had about a thousand of them or maybe it was like 500 of them uh printed up a while back and i, know, I think it was a thousand i think it was a thousand because we put some in local businesses yeah. that accept bitcoin and then we handed out like 500 more because i had a quick print job done at the local county fair last week and man we've been cranking through them so it's great we're getting the word out about bitcoin here and you can do the same thing uh, of course, go and get started at weusecoins.com to learn more about this amazing decentralized currency that is taking the internet by storm. Dell Computer, Wikipedia, both now taking Bitcoin. The important question is, are you accepting Bitcoin? And if not, go to blockchain.com to get started on that path tonight. Let's go uh, back to your phone calls and thoughts. Josh is in Alabama. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian, Ellen, and Daryl. Uh, what's going on, guys? How are Josh, you? Josh, uh, good, man, good. Hey, can you back off your phone like one inch and see if that you know, maybe make you sound a little better? Is that better? A little bit. Go ahead. A little more? Yeah, good, good. Okay, cool. All right, uh, the yeah. number one like issue that. to the Republican Party, uh, it's more important than abortion, is Israel. And you are never going to be able to win a Republican nomination unless you support Israel. As we saw with Ron Paul in 2012, libertarians are not enough to be able to uh, win the uh, Republican uh, nomination for president. So Rand Paul needs both the Tea Party and he needs the libertarians to be able to win this thing. So how's that going to uh, play out? Because you can't have me as a liberty-minded person unless you're going to actually talk about freedom. So he's not going to get real libertarians on board, in my opinion. Well, you know, like we were, like he was talking about level uh -oh. of violence. Okay, if if Rand is like a forty or something like that, and everybody else is a ninety, then wouldn't you rather have Rand Paul be in that position where we continue moving that puck down the field? <laughs> if Rand Paul were a forty, then that would probably be a good thing. There's no but evidence Rand for Paul's that. Rand Paul's like an eighty-seven point <laughs> two. But we're not talking about Mitt Romney versus Barack Obama here. We're talking about Rand Paul, who does have more liberty views than the rest of the field. What the ball moment. are you going to run you down the field with this guy? I mean, nobody's okay, run the ball tell, down the me, field at all. Even on. when Ron Paul was elected, the Liberty, if you're talking about the Liberty Ball, that thing didn't move anywhere. Th this is Rand right, Paul, because, the guy that said. Because he scared the living crap out of Republicans. Hold on. Rand Paul, the guy that said, and I quote, if someone comes out of a liquor store with a weapon and $50 in cash, I don't care if a drone kills him or if a policeman kills him. Liberty. In right New down. Hampshire, it is legal I to carry know. a gun into a liquor store. It is also legal to have $50 smarter. when you come out of said right. liquor store. Shouting across. I know that you are smarter. Sorry, I apologize. Okay. I know that y'all are smarter than that to to not to think that uh, that statement was was. Uh, accurate uh, that he really believes. I mean, he's playing politics, and I think he's doing a fairly decent job at it. This is what it really insults me, by the way, and this is one of the reasons why I can never support Rand Paul. Because if what you're saying is true, and I'd like to get Ellen's opinion about this, but if what you're saying is true, this is a common refrain when it comes to the the liberty supporters of Rand Paul. They will excuse the things he says about violence and, and the things he votes on. Right. And the things he does and the things he votes on and, you know, all the bad stuff out there about Rand Paul. They'll excuse it all by saying, 
oh, he's just running a game on you guys. He's just scamming everybody. He's just acting like a Republican so he can get in and be his father and and uh, totally be liberty-oriented in office. But he's waiting until he gets to the presidency because right now he's a senator and he's still got to play politics until he can finally win the presidency. And then we'll have our glorious libertarian revolution. And I'm sorry, it's just absolutely ridiculous and totally unbelievable because if somebody actually has principles, but then obscures those principles for the purposes of getting elected, I don't trust that person. That person's a liar and making the excuse that, well, they're a politician. <laughs> yes, you should support them. They're lying to get into office so they can, we can all be free. But that politicians is, that's gonna work are out. paid for that. That is their job. They are paid to make statements that are oftentimes not true. Sure, but do you want to support a liar? I mean, no, and if, I think it's very sad that people are being duped like that. Even if it's true, even if the conspiracy about Rand Paul is true, and that is that he's really the secretly liberty-oriented guy who's running as a Republican in order to get into office, and then he's going to throw off the cloak of darkness and uh, lead us all into the light, um, then you're being dishonest right up front. And so, that, to me, that just negates anything good that you would do later on. You've used duplicity. Uh, you've used deception in order to get into office. And I don't find that's very a cool thing. And some of the Free State Project participants are doing this. They'll pretend like they're not Free Staters or something. Or when asked the question, they'll try to dodge the question. Own up, man. Own up to what you believe in. And stop... Uh, stop beating around the bush about this stuff. If we want people to come to the ideas of liberty, we're not going to sneak them into it. We're not going to get them through the back door. They're going to have to come to the ideas on their own volition, not because some politician lied to them and then turns the tables on them. And by the way, even if that were true, even if Rand Paul were to get elected, he still wouldn't be able to change much of anything. You know, I think that if somebody was, if if that story about Rand Paul is true, that when he gets into office, he's going to, you know, unveil himself as this massive liberty proponent, then, you know, I wouldn't be too upset with that. I mean, sure, there'd be a lot of people that are upset that now they're being, like, forced to be free or whatever, but, I mean, I I would feel better about that than, you know, voting for Rand Paul, hoping that he's going to end up doing that, and then finding out afterwards, well... I guess I was wrong the whole time because he's just the same as every other politician. Josh, any final thoughts? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. Do you remember when Ron Paul was asked about gay marriage? He said, I don't think the federal government should have, I'll never use federal power to, to enforce my viewpoints on anybody. Mm -hmm. When Rand Paul was asked that same question, he said, we can fight the gay mafia – uh, better at the state level. Uh, the, you see what I'm saying? That's the kind of stuff that I'm talking about here. Sounds like a homophobe to me. I certainly going to get my vote. No, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not a homophobe statement order because the policies are exactly the same between him and his father. He just says it in a much different way that uh, that red staters absolutely will eat like red meat. Thanks for they the call tonight, Josh. Something. I appreciate hearing from you. I don't get excited by liars and people who deceive. I mean, Rand Paul might as well be a narcotics cop, as far as I'm concerned. Same level of scumbaggery, in my opinion. 855 450 free. This is Dan Pillett. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800 34 No Tax to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Do you ever feel like you live in an alternate universe? As the stock market hits new highs, the middle class are dying. Manipulated financial markets and economic figures, chaos on our border, China and Russia bypassing the dollar. Life is getting ready to change. You need to prepare to thrive in the new economy. Go to babyboomerbackupplan.com or call 888-507-8789. That's 888-507-8789. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc 
as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPRadio.com. The monthly newspaper, FPP News at news.fpp.cc, and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. Americans are reeling from Obamacare, higher prices, and an epidemic of policy lapses. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com has you covered. World-class medical and surgery at one of Asia's most modern hospitals. 300 doctors, surgeons, and dentists serving 300,000 patients a year. Fractions of U.S. prices. Friends or family forced to go out of pocket? Avoid bankruptcy. Tell them to run. Run like hell. Hit us up now. We'll show you how. AsiaRunLikeHellGuide.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want right here toll-free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features waiting for you on site. And you can actually create the content there. What you see on the main page, those items, that as you scroll down, the numbered items, those were put there by listeners like you. Maybe it even was you. And then you can vote on those that have been submitted by others, and those others can vote on the ones that you submit. And then you know we'll figure out what you like as a result of that. It's a great way for us on the show to know what you, the listeners, think is important. You know, If you don't feel like picking up the phone and telling us, this website is a good way to uh, inform us. So go to freetalklive.com and get interactive there. Also, coffee.freetalklive.com. That's where you can go to get a free pound of some of the best coffee out there buzz box coffee it's shade grown 100 percent organic and top one percent grade arabica buzz box does something different than those other high-end coffee companies not only do they send this coffee to your door they make it easy for you but also they're helping people around the world make a better life for themselves they've created a co-op allowing people anywhere in the world to buy into that uh, and they're also teaming up with world vision so free talk live working with uh, buzz box and world vision For every 10 listeners of Free Talk Live that signs up at coffee.freetalklive.com, you get a free pound of coffee, just pay the shipping cost. Every 10 listeners that signs up to this auto ship program, that will fund one micro loan to help change the lives of people in really tough parts of the world to live in. Uh, people in poverty. So go to coffee.freetalklive.com. You get great coffee. You get a great price. And uh, and again, you start with a a free pound by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. You can cancel your subscription at any time and you get that free pound just by paying the shipping cost. As we go back to the phones and the fun, Rand Paul actually on the line in Washington, D.C. Rand Paul, you're on the air. Yeah, he got mentioned in the a National Review Online today, and an article about him, and so did Dorkfest, by the way, in a passing about people carrying guns at your little uh, uh, 
fake session that you guys had about a month ago. You're talking about the Porcupine anyway, Freedom well, Festival. It's a yearly campout uh, festival that happens here in New Hampshire. Anyway, uh, Minister, I wanted to tell you yesterday uh, that migration is old, is as old as the wheel, and our borders have been as an open and porous since boats that float. And uh, it can be reached now from the sky as fast as planes can flap their wings. But... Uh, Huh? Well, Planes don't flap Greg. their wings. Oh, come on. That was kind of funny. What are you getting at, Rand? Well, the the gun thing I wanted to ask you about, because you think it's funny that, Minister, you, I wanted to talk about migration, but you also have a lot of fun poke, uh, putting Facebook posts on me about guns. I don't know I where that I have no idea from. what you're talking about. Lawnmower man? I didn't make it up. It's on your Facebook page. Brother, oh, I don't look at my live, Facebook page is. except during free the show. Talk live, that is. So well, there's, there's like probably five or six live. different people who take care of that Facebook page. So, so you're would, not going to take credit for that. Are you but saying that someone called you the lawnmower the man? Then? May I finish my thoughts on the migration? No, I'd like, like to know what you're getting at live, here. Facebook instead of page. instead of you making uh, obscure— Okay, okay I'm putting you on hold because you can't wait until I finish speaking a sentence before you keep talking. You're referencing something that I don't know anything about, and it's certainly likely that many of our listeners don't know what you're talking about. You, you've you called in twice recently calling yourself the lawnmower man. I actually didn't ask you why you were doing that. I didn't really care. But now I'd like to know, um, because you're referencing, you're saying it was something on our Facebook page. Are you saying, uh, Rand, that someone was making fun of you by calling you the lawnmower man? What is that reference about? It's a John Deere lawnmower uh, rigged with guns. I don't know why anybody thinks that's funny, but if you didn't post it on your front page of Free Talk Live's Facebook page, I should like to know who did so I can confront them on it, because I don't know why that's funny, and I have never mentioned guns. But I wanted to continue my okay. thoughts about migration. It definitely wasn't me. Minister, Let me tell you, I don't think one iota about you whenever I'm not on the air, so it certainly wasn't me. I don't know who it was. So. Oh, of course not. You, like you I know I've heard Mark say you discuss me off the air before, but that's okay. You don't need to tell the truth all the time like you No, the only time we discuss you off like the air is when you I call you obsessively. It's when you call obsessively after uh, the show, and I've now since asked you to stop doing that. And you've actually stopped, so I appreciate that. Uh, go ahead there, Rand. And I'm all good with that, so I'll continue to call in as long as you do. But I want to continue my thoughts on migration, if I may, minister, which I would have suggested to you if you were a real minister, you would say to Greg, uh, 3,000-year-old wisdom that some people actually believe the Lord our God commanded one to treat a stranger that sojourns amongst them as oneself. Treat the sojourner as one born amongst you, for you shall love the stranger as as your neighbor. You know, Rand, you have a real strange way of going about agreeing with me on something. I appreciate your call. Yeah, Thanks for making it know. tonight. Speaking of Greg, he's on the line in New York. And Greg, you're on Free Talk Live. Uh, guys, um, or I should actually say, hey, y'all, with Ellen there. Uh, oh, hey there. Hello. Even though I'm from New York. I don't know. Guys is it, usually an appropriate term for a group, including women. And even I think you can get away with calling a group of women guys. I've done it. Yeah, it it's like saying you all. Right. It doesn't feel uncomfortable to me to call a group of uh, females guys. Does that seem weird? No, not really. Although yeah. I, I have seen, you know, there are some women that are just the ultra. I, I don't. It's Even sexist. Know if I'm not a guy. Is the, is the right term, but you know, <laughs> some women that will get upset. Over, you know, the term guys because well, I mean, they assume that it means men. If you understand what the person is saying when they say guys, like, you know that they're just saying you all. Right. So, it, you know, it, it doesn't bother me. But I could see how, you know, there'd be some super feminists who'd be like, I'm not a man. Don't use that stereotype. <laughs> just because it's been used for years doesn't mean you have to continue doing it. All right, Greg, go ahead with your point. Yeah, you know, um, so I actually originally called in to talk about immigration. Um, but I, you know, due to some of the previous uh, callers, I actually got to thinking uh, it would be interesting to talk about immigration um, and how it relates to Israel and uh, the Gaza Strip and just in general that whole area. Because um, you could sort of see the um, kind of statism versus, I guess, tribalism or smaller groups uh, playing out. Because the whole region, uh, if you start in the 19th century, that whole region was under the Ottoman Empire. 
and the Ottoman Turks uh, in some places were very bloodthirsty because they, like the, Ar they decimated the Armenians. They killed a bunch of Greeks. Uh, but in that area, it was mostly uh, peaceful, and nobody really wanted to have their own uh, state. But when the Ottoman Empire was destroyed, there was you know this sort of vacuum there, and the British uh, were given a mandate to sort of take the people that were living there, the Jews, Christians, and Muslims, and make one state. Uh, that didn't really work out. And so what we have is basically um, a recommendation for a partition and two different people have, you know, having two different states. Uh, and what happened was basically the Jews got their state, and I suppose the um, – and this is what's interesting. The Arabs, because at that time everyone was called Palestinian, but then the Arabs um, uh, basically got a national uh, nationalistic um, – movement as well. There were a bunch of movements back then. There was like pan-Arabism that they wanted to, you know, belong to sort of like all uh, Arabs. There was uh, a thought that they could become part of greater Syria. Um, go back to that. Uh, and I think for the last 40, 50 years, there's this national movement. And so, you know, um, my question to you is like, what, is, what necessarily is wrong with that? I, I see, though, that this movement uh, in, on both sides is partially responsible for all the violence. Like, if the people didn't really care about having their own state, they, they wouldn't have this, like, um, militant terrorism sort of, uh, you know, which both groups kind of had just to build their state for themselves. That's how I see it. So can you be more specific with the question? Sorry. Um, so my question is, what, um, what do you think uh, about the role of I guess, people's desire to have their own state uh, in the violence that you see there. All right, stand by. We can come decades. back and uh, discuss here in moments. What is the role of the desire of people to have their own state in the violence of the Middle East, Middle East, uh, Gaza, Israel, etc.? We'll come back with that. 855-450-FREE, and we'll try to sneak your call in here. If you're already on the line, we might be able to get you on here tonight on Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help Liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone-proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Moms of America, stand up and stop taking abuse from your kids. I pledge never to let my kid disrespect me ever again. I pledge to stop letting my daughter walk all over me. I pledge to stop living in fear of my son's anger. I pledge never to feel like a bad parent ever again. Because I'm not. I pledge to stop letting my child's behavior control my home. I pledge to be a mom with kids who listen. A total transformation mom. I'm Janet Lehman, co-creator of the Total Transformation Program. We created the Total Transformation to help parents with difficult child behavior. Now I'm giving it away free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. We'll let you keep it for free. Call 1-800-256-7795. That's 1-800-256-7795. Call now. Call 1-800-256-7795. That's 1-800-256-7795. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. 
This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Hi, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. The internet has lowered the cost barrier for a worldwide radio show to a price approaching zero. Yet there is one arena where you still need thousands of dollars to approach the audio quality of the corporate media. Doing a live spoken show with more than one host in different geographic locations. Our program, Fiend Phone, will solve that problem and it will be given away free. Go to fiendphone.com to see what you can do to help. That's F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E dot com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip-in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up whatever you want. Just dial on in toll-free here at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We'll try to get you in here tonight. If you don't get on tonight, you can always call back tomorrow, and uh, we'll get you on whenever you happen to call in. We will take your calls anytime. You can also join us via Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Don't forget, you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Let's go back to the phones here and to the fun. We've got Greg on the line in New York. Now, Greg, you'd asked a question about uh, conflict in the Middle East, specifically the Israel-Palestinian kind of conflict situation, this ongoing saga. Mm -hmm. And your question was in regards to what is the role of the desire of people to have their own state in that conflict? Yeah, I guess uh, my question came out con very convoluted because uh, it's a complicated topic. Uh, but uh, what do you see as the role, sort of? Because obviously, the Jews, want, uh, you know, it, on the Jewish side, there were opinions ranging from religious groups saying we should not have our own state and we should wait for the Messiah to come, uh, versus Zionists that would say, yes, we should have our own state, and in fact, it should have uh, as wide borders as possible. And on the Arab side, there was the same thing. Some Arabs wanted to just kind of be like pan-Arabism and wanted to, um, you know, join uh, with all Arabs everywhere in a religious sort of sense, perhaps, if they're Muslim. Um, but on the other hand, um, you know, they, some of them were national. And so my question is this nationalistic feeling of saying, okay, we've been living on this land for a long time. Uh, we want to have our own state so we could perhaps join the international community or whatever. Uh, how much does that lead to violence, and how much is that responsible for the violence that we see there? It's not so much the desire for self-determination that is causing violence. It is the people opposing other people's rights to self-determination that is causing the violence. Right. And so, so you're, you're asking the question as... in a backwards manner as if it's the people seeking self-determination that are— causing the violence. It's the people that are opposing their self-determination that are causing the violence. Okay, so that's kind of my question. I, I'm framing it that way only because uh, since you guys stand for liberty, do you, and you're opposed to states, I suppose, and that's sort of my question because on the other hand, the state is sort of what uh, the people that want to have, uh, many of them, and they kind of impose it on everyone else to have self-determination, you know, Maybe some people don't want to, have to be part of that state, but mm -hmm. uh, ultimately um, those people are not going to uh, get what they want because the state is going to be formed eventually. Yeah, so yeah, I guess yeah, my question true. is, you know, so that's my question sort of. Are you for self-determination in terms of building a state or against it? Uh, well, I'm against, this this, I'm against the idea of the state, period. 
But if the question is, should we have uh, one state or two, I would choose two because I'd rather have more choices available for people. And of course, ideally, those people should be able to, to travel to whichever state they would like to travel to. Uh, so, for instance, people who feel persecuted around the world in whatever conflict we're talking about should be free to get the hell out of there and come <laughs> here where they could have a better life for themselves if this were actually a free country wherein people could come here from around the world. But unfortunately, uh, the government bureaucrats have made that as difficult and as arduous a pos uh, as process of, of, uh, as they possibly could. So, I mean, there's no ideal answer to the real world situation that... Uh, I think that we're confronted with that's that's how I see it at least. Um, yeah, I guess uh, from my point of view, I'm not uh, necessarily an anarchist or even uh, a strong libertarian. Uh, you know, I've called them before with some, I guess, liberal or minarchist uh, views. Uh, but in my opinion, I think the shortest path at this point to prosperity for the people of Gaza uh, would be to somehow get rid of Hamas uh, and. And then once, uh, or disarm Hamas, because if there are no weapons there, I think the international community would literally give them billions, maybe fifty, a hundred billion dollars to develop their natural resources and have a you know a tourism industry. But as like, if Hamas, the Israeli government to... has absolutely no interest in allowing the people of Gaza to exist in any form other than as subjects of the Israeli government. That's why they're dropping all of these bombs on UN-run refugee centers. And Benjamin Netanyahu, the prime minister of Israel, said that it would have been a moral hazard to not bomb the refugee centers because by not killing innocent civilians, they would have been uh, giving aid and comfort to Hamas and mm. strengthening al-Qaeda. No, I think that's a very fair point. Uh, but I think everybody would agree that if uh, if the, there are no terror groups in Gaza, when I say terror groups, there are no militant groups firing rockets at a neighboring country, then Israel would not have any uh, legitimacy to go in there or bomb anyone or even cross the border at all. And but they, the you know, bombing point, began they because of the Israeli military. The IDF initiated the bombing. The Israeli government initiated the blockade. They're the ones that put up the yeah, wall on the, the Gaza border. Definitely. They're the ones that are preventing ships from coming in to bring food and clothing mm. and other goods to the people of Gaza. Great, what thanks. I just want to add is not just the Israelis. Pretty much every nation at this point is calling for Hamas to disarm. The Egyptians have a blockade. The Saudis, the UAE. Well, sure, the, the Israelis European have curried Union. favor with a lot of the big uh, countries out there, right? So, you know, they've got all well, the money that, coming from the feds. Hamas is, well, yes, but also it's because Hamas is, after all, n not willing to commit to any kind of peace, uh, long-term peace. Well, what does that mean? Uh, all I'm when, is, when you're talking about long-term peace, what does that mean? Haven't the well, Israelis broken the peace accords? The, the ceasefires that have been offered is for the leaders of Hamas to swear that they will disarm everybody in Gaza while the Israeli military is allowed to still fire on civilians and that sounds like a Holocaust. attack these tunnels that people are using to sneak into Israel to get food and clothing and other supplies that they need. Yeah, also, if really these people are militant problem. radicals, then what is it going to matter if they say, like, oh, we'll disarm everyone? They can't actually do that. Right. Greg, thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Sure. Let's go to Richie in New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Richie. Hey, I was actually calling about uh, which you guys were talking about with Rand Paul. Um, I'm not a supporter of his by any means, but what I will do is I will say, I will um, uh, try, sorry, my one blank. Um, I, I will um, promote some of the things that he does say that are better than what we have now. Mandatory minimums, he wants to get rid of that. He wants to abolish asset forfeiture. So he's not all bad at everything, but I don't think he's, pro-liberty enough for me to vote for. Yeah, so, I, let, let me ask you this question on a completely different note on the whole, you know, settling for the lesser evil. 
In the U.S. Senate election coming up uh, this year here in New Hampshire, if Scott Brown is the Republican nominee, are you going to vote for him because he's slightly better than Gene Shaheen? No, I'll write in something like Berman Supreme or something ridiculous <laughs> like that. Awesome. Uh, you know, I... Yeah, I have. I, I will not vote for Scott Brown. I mean, that guy's in some ways is worse than Shin Chi Hin. Well, I don't know. A, I don't know a damn thing about the two of them, and I don't really even care to bother learning anything about it. All I know is that they're uh, politicians who are running for a federal office, and they have an R and a D behind their name, and that's enough for me to not care. Hey, hey, thanks, Richie. Anything else you want to share tonight? No, no, that's it. Appreciate your call. Let's go to Nathan in Texas. You're on Free Talk Live via Skype. Hi, Nathan. Hi. Um, about Rand Paul, I think a lot of people expect him to be just like his dad, and I don't think that's very realistic. No, I think you're right about that. But inevitably, that's uh, to whom he will be most compared. And the fact is, he can't hold his dad's jockstrap. Yeah, well, a lot of people expect, like, if he's been raised by this man, then he'll have some residual beliefs, at least similar Apparently, that's about all way. he's got is a re residual belief. <laughs> I don't, you just expect that, like, there's similarities between father and son, and maybe, maybe there could be a slight chance that his ideology is similar. But I, I don't think that if you look at his actions, you could actually draw that conclusion. It's just if you just hear the names and kind of know that they're related, you might assume that. And uh, another thing is that even if he is elected, um, consider the possibility of what he uh, might do to the reputation of people involved in the libertarian movement. Right, there's a lot of people out there that do that, though. Well, I don't think it's just Rand because Paul. Because if he does, if he makes compromises or does nasty things, then people can say, oh, well, that's libertarians. what libertarians are yep. about. Oh, you guys yep. support war and uh, destroying immigration and immigrants and blah, 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 and all these things that he supports. He's not a libertarian, and you're right. He's already doing damage, though. I mean, even without being elected, with this getting This is all what the happens when you're a collectivist. Yeah. Uh, I wish we had more time, but we don't. Compromise. Thanks, Nathan. I appreciate hearing from you. And we will see you tomorrow online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Check out Daryl on his website, fpp.cc. And again, more Free Talk Live tomorrow night, freetalklive.com. In the meantime. Ameri a mouse is eaten. It is an event that happens millions of times a day. All over the world. Other mice are wiped out by disease or starvation. If you collected all the mice that die in one day in New York City, they would weigh 8,000 pounds. If you stacked up an equivalent amount of dead humans or even mangy dogs, it would be considered an atrocity. It seems no one has any respect for the mouse. But then, why should they? The plankton of mammals. They breed rapidly. They all look identical, and they once spread the plague. No one weeps for the mouse, for its life is worth less than zero. Just another cold fact of life on this horrifying planet. This is the Onion News Network. My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at fff at fff.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's fff at fff.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. The Corey Moore Show is coming up.